some people will tell me, I have a thousand dollars for you if you, you know, just send me this type of photo or can I just take pictures of you with this or I don't know, just weird things like offering me money. And okay. I'm like, uh, no. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Empire. We like to engage with everyone from pastors to actors, rappers to trappers, and everybody in between. And guess what? Today is no different. And we got another great guest. But before we get into it, y'all should know the dizzle. But if you don't, it's just like seasoning on the dill, right? For this video, which is like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, right? If you guys didn't know, my name is Antonio The Miles. I am the host for today. And yeah, like I said, another great guest. And, um, you know, we're going to learn a lot more about this young lady here. We're just going to say and get right into it. We're not going to, we're not going to do too much big spill about blah, 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 and blah, 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 and gotta, gotta, gotta. You know, I hope you guys understand that language. It's um, Ewok language, if you guys know what Ewoks are. Anyway, our guest today is a fashion model, lovely lady, and her name is Linda Reyes. Welcome to the Empire, Linda. Thank you for having me. I'm so, so glad excited. to have you. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great, actually. Very, very blessed to be here and oh. to, you know, talk to you and talk to everybody else. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. You know, she's talking to me mostly, folks. Y'all just <laughs> listening. Yeah. Nice nah, joking. <laughs> she wants to talk to you. She could talk to you guys, too, if you want. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's been a good day, you were saying? Yeah, so far it's been gotcha. a good day. It's barely the beginning of it. I have a long day today. I have a lot of co a couple of things to do today, but it, it'll be a good day. So Got far it's starting off great, yeah. Nice. I, how could it not start off great with right here, right? Yeah, gotcha. right, yeah. What else you got going on later today? So I actually have to go to Glendora. I'm getting my haircut. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going all the way out there to Glendora for my haircut. Mm -hmm. I have that going on. Um, and then a Christmas party later on oh, tonight. Oh, snaps. Yeah, not Alonto. So I'm excited about that. Got you. Are, are we getting lit tonight? <laughs> mm, maybe. Maybe a little bit, only because I plan to drive back. So, oh. Yeah, be careful when you go out and party, you guys. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> very wise words. Very wise. Thank goodness we have Uber now and stuff like that. Yeah, and you're right. I guess we had taxis beforehand, but yeah. yeah. that's true. Got gotcha. you. If you can't drive, don't go nowhere. That part. Sleep you in your car. Yeah. Whatever you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't drink and drive. Wise words from the lady here. I like that. Yeah, thank you. How short I'm, are you going to cut your hair? You know what? I'm, I'm not going to go any shorter. I'm probably just... I don't know if you're familiar with long layers. For, no. For, for women... No. Okay. <laughs> It's just cutting some layers in your hair, but instead of it looking like uh, shorter or choppier, it's more like long. Um, I feel like it's more sophisticated looking. Okay. Right now, right now my hair is like all one length. So oh. I'm definitely overdue though for a hair trim. So <laughs> I think I understand what you mean by layers. Like it's uh, doom, doom, doom. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so you're going for the, um, oh God, what's her name? An actress, a famous actress. Um, Gloria? No. Audrey Hepburn? Are you going for like the sophisticated Audrey Hepburn look? Is that what? Audrey Hepburn. Okay, yeah, I guess you can say that. But more so like, um, I guess you can say, I don't know, are you familiar? I mean, everybody knows who Kim Kardashian is. Like, you know. The Dashian, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm going after her look, but her long layers is kind of something a lot of people might be familiar with. Okay. You know? But Audrey Hepburn, yeah, she's a very sophisticated lady. I, yeah. I'd like to, you know. I'll go after her a little bit, but gotcha. I think her hair was a lot shorter. I want to say my hair is a I, lot longer. I just thought of sophisticated. When you said sophisticated, yeah. I thought immediately her for some reason. Yeah. I don't know how sophisticated she really is, but it just <laughs> came to me. Yeah, a very classic lady. Yeah, <laughs> we, we like we like classic ladies, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a rarity nowadays, but that's a different story. <laughs> different um, story for another day. <laughs> yeah, another day. Well, we'll get into that one. We'll get into that one. Um, so, Linda, for people who may not know who you are and what you do, can you please tell all of us who you are and the things that you do? Yeah, so um, I'm Linda Reyes. I'm from San Bernardino, born and raised here. Um, I do modeling, and um, I started modeling maybe about seven plus years ago. And I've never been signed to an agent or an agency. I've kind of done everything on my own. Um, but in between that time, I've done some acting, background acting. I've done. Um, I've been in magazines. I've, on all of this, mind you, it was kind of by myself. Um, which I would really like to touch on because I feel like a lot of people think that in order to make things happen for yourself, you have to rely on somebody else. 
but you can do it on your own. Um, also, too, I'm, I guess you can consider me an influencer, like a beauty influencer, only because I've had sponsors send me items just to um, make videos with their stuff and all that. But that kind of came after I was doing my modeling because I would tag all of these products that I was using mm -hmm. or... Um, even if I wasn't using the product, I would tag their names, like big brands that I wanted to work with. So, um, yeah, I guess you can call me a beauty influencer, a fashion model. I've done um, beauty beauty modeling, too, which is kind of more like the close-ups, the makeup and all of that. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I do that. But I'm also a regular person, too. I work I work a, a regular job in a medical office. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much like a regular person, but I also do all of these other things on the side, too, that has to do with modeling. Got you. You know, it's so funny because, like, there's, like, a term that people call, like, normies. Like, yeah, the normies, you know, the normies. And yes, I'm average still. Got you. Okay. Oh, dang. I guess, are we working to get above the average? Are we working to get above yeah, the average? Okay. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's another thing, too, is that when, when so society wants you to, like, you know, go to work, you got to get a house, get a car and all of that. And that's kind of what I was doing at first. But um, then I realized I didn't want to do that. So um, I found myself wanting to do more and, you know, not be stuck in an office. So okay. I'm working towards not being behind a computer screen, you know? Gotcha. You're transitioning. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But still staying a woman. Yes. Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. That was a little joke there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I have to address this because you said all by yourself, no agency, no agent, mm -hmm. right? Stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. And I think what's kind of cool is like we live in this social media era where mm -hmm. like you can kind of push forward and kind of just market yourself. But yeah. would, are you open minded to dealing with an agent or an agency or what's 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 your mind at with that? Yeah. You know what? Um, so to be honest, during the time that I started modeling up until now, um, I have thought about being signed to an agency and in the beginning of it, I was looking for an agent, um, but I kept getting turned down and it was a little discouraging at first. So then that's when I was realizing, why am I looking so hard for an agent? Why not mm. just do it on my own? And, you know, it did turn into something, but there's also moments that I had where I guess I've. I figured that having an agent would be good because I wouldn't have to manage everything on my own, which did get stressful at sometimes. So even now, you know, I kind of consider maybe I should try signing for an agent or something, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm having some ideas on doing it pretty soon, maybe seeing if I can find somebody or go somewhere. But um, I don't know. I kind of like my independency at the same time. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. But it might get to a point where it gets to a level where you might have to mm -hmm. outsource, right? Yeah. Outside the world. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned that you got denied, right? Yeah. So what were the, did they give you a reason why? Did they tell you why? Um, yeah, usually, and I feel like this goes for a lot of women, could be men too, if they're looking for an agency. Um, a lot of times they're saying, oh, thank you for submitting, but you're not what we're looking for right now. You know, mm -hmm. The look, I guess, you're not what we're looking for right now. So that's pretty much what I would hear back is thank you, try again in six months or, you know, something like that. But we're not, you're not what we're looking for. Okay. So, you know, and then that kind of made me think like, well, what's wrong with me? <laughs> that part, yeah. yeah. Shots fired at the, <laughs> jeez. Yeah. So what do you think they're they're looking for? What do you think the image is? Um. So... I felt like they were looking for somebody that looked more unique. Somebody, I mean, at the time I was kind of thinking I didn't look like just everybody else. But then when I started looking at other girls that were showing up to those open calls and stuff, yeah. a lot of them did look different. And I'm, I probably looked average while being in the same room with them. So I feel, I feel that um, I just, thought I looked exotic, but I, I don't know. I probably don't. Some people think I do, but to them, they want somebody that looks like, like out of, out of the normal person or somebody that has a look that they can do diverse looks on. You know what I mean? Can you give us an example? Like, can you name like a celebrity or someone like that? Um, let that me might see fit that if mold. I can think of somebody. 
I can't really think of a name, but I have seen some models where they're on maybe like a beauty commercial okay. where they have like small noses or faces or like, um, I don't, I don't know if asymmetrical would be the word, but like okay. they would look a little like different, like something that would catch somebody's like eye, uh, you know, catch their gotcha. eyes. Like Frankenstein. <laughs> like Frankenstein. Yeah, we could say that. Okay. Got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For some reason, when you said like, because what, immediately what do you think when I, when you started saying that, I'm starting thinking, okay, like maybe like someone who's mixed, right? Mm-hmm. Someone like, you know, half black, half Mexican, half whatever. Right. Yeah. They're looking for like that exotic, but where you can't tell like, who, who, what are you? Where are you yeah. from? Type of thing. That's kind of the thing yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of maybe uh-huh. think. Yeah, definitely. Name, I was thinking Zendaya. Is that her name? The actress Zendaya? That she was, she would actually be a good one yeah. to, to use as an example. Okay. I feel like somebody like her would be what these agents are looking for okay yeah that type of look mm -hmm. gotcha yeah yeah like what is like what is she like we need we need to see more of her you know interesting yeah okay Uh and there's layers to modeling right i think i kind of want to get in tech i know there's like yeah there's like you know there's a really big uh push towards like big girl plus size models and stuff like that. definitely yeah uh-huh and i've actually seen that happen from when i first started modeling um i want to say when i first began to model it was during the time when Instagram was barely like coming up. Okay. So there wasn't all of it's it's crazy to me because when I started modeling, it wasn't as easy to get noticed. Mm. And especially if you were by yourself, doing it by yourself. So I seen when all of these um like groups of people were able to be able to stand out more, like how you mentioned, you know, the curvy girls. Yeah. That wasn't a big thing like eight years ago you know non-existent basically <laughs> yeah, and now it is you know which is good because i feel like inclusion is important you know inclusivity yeah. like you know there's especially nowadays a lot of women look different like before everybody wanted to look like a certain like you have to be a certain size a certain height and everything but nowadays it's like everybody has a chance and i think that's really that's great you know because before a lot of it was it was just really uh, disheartening to like think I have to look a certain way just to do something big, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And um, just my opinion, folks, I think they're, how am I going to say this? <laughs> I think there is a, I think there's like a universal standard of beauty, right? I think mm-hmm. there's like a thing that like, if you're in Mexico, this is people think this is beautiful. Or if you're in Africa, people think this is beauty, beautiful. In Europe, Australia, people think this is beautiful, right? Like mm-hmm. wherever you go, the same person will fit. Mm-hmm. And I think in our modern society now, we're trying to push people in images that aren't really globally accepted as beautiful, quote unquote, or attractive mm-hmm. to be attractive. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's me saying that in a nice way <laughs> and respectful. And, you know, whoever like like whoever you like in the end of the day, folks, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying I, I believe there is a a universal image that people find attractive. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. For both men and for both women. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? I agree. Um, so, Linda, you mentioned earlier that you're born and raised in San Bernardino? Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, I am. So, can you give us all a brief story of where you grew up, how you grew up, all the way up to... A little of my background. Where we're at today. Yeah? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, so I was born here in San Bernardino at St. Bernardine's Hospital. Okay. And um, I've pretty much lived, uh, for everybody who's from here, we know where Highland is, right? It's okay. the Highland area. It's eastward of San Bernardino. Um, so I grew up in between San Bernardino and Highland area. I, I kind of moved around a little after, I want to say... 2007 i've lived here my whole life maybe i lived in hesperia for about a year or so but that was before going to like first grade or something but um yeah for most of the time i was here and during my middle school years and high school years i went to different high schools like each year and so i was yeah i was here in san Bernardino and highland and in redlands mainly so um i made a lot of friends everywhere i went i was easy going I feel like okay. a very friendly person you know so um making friends wasn't hard for me um but I think I think throughout moving and everything I had to learn to adapt you know to everywhere I went because Redlands is a little different than over here and then going yeah. you know what I mean but I mean 
I feel, I, I, I think I wouldn't have had it any other way because then I wouldn't have known so many people. A lot, I've, met, I've made a lot of good friends who actually helped me step more into, I guess, um, kind of empowering me to, to be like more of myself. Because okay. uh, for a while, I felt like I had to fit in with other people. And I think maybe my high school, my senior year in particular, that's where I kind of was. I made a, I made a group of friends where they really pushed me to, to be who I am now. They kind of like helped jumpstart that. Got and then you. from that point on, I kind of like took off and ran with it. <laughs> so who were you before and what, what was the thing that helped make you transition to being your authentic self? So who I was before. If you can remember that person. Yeah, you know what? I, looking back at it, I feel like I, I try to fit in a lot with people, but I, it was kind of like, it, it wouldn't help me. Like, it would kind of get me in trouble. Like, you know what I mean? Give us an example. <laughs> we're, we're, we're floating here. We're like, what is she talking about? Okay. I feel like back then, I I always wanted to be just like everybody else sometimes and I hate to say this like I, I feel like I was so friendly I would talk to a bunch of people and sometimes I had friends that are, were in my close group that would be like why are you talking to them you know or how could like uh, like ooh, do you even know who they are like why are you talking to them or they could be nerdy people why are you talking to them you know so I felt like I had to fit in with my close friends mm -hmm. to where I would like kind of not be so nice and it, it, I don't know I cringe when I think at those moments because I was trying to be the cool person but now looking back like I was the cool person being nice to everybody you know yeah and so um be, who I was before it's like, like a mean girl story <laughs> if you've seen the tv show the movie mean girls or whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess you could say that like how Lindsay Lohan comes in and then she tries to fit in with her new friend group yeah or the whatever. cool girls are like don't talk yeah, to them yeah 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 uh-huh yeah, uh -huh, yeah. I, ugh, I did just cringe at it. but I didn't really have the so I'm I'm the oldest sibling in my family. So I didn't really have somebody ahead of me kind of guiding me. Okay. You know, I was a little, you know, floating around like a little lost sheep, but like trying to fit in where I could. But I, I always had like a solid group of friends, you know, and I love them, you know, my friends, I still love them. And I feel like, um, you know, we're all different people now than who we were back then, like in like my freshman year and stuff like that, or even in eighth grade. But um, so anyways, I, you know, I jumped around from different schools and stuff, but I made friends everywhere. So I think when I, when I started to uh, get to like my sophomore, junior year, um, so my sophomore year, I had went to a different school. I actually went to Sanji mm -hmm. for, the, for that year. And then um, I didn't really have too many close friends, but I did have like one solid friend that I knew in seventh grade. And I hadn't seen her in like two years because mind you, I had from seventh grade, I went to Serrano and then I went to Beatty and Highland. I'm not too sure if you're familiar. No, continue yeah. though. Okay. Continue. Okay, so seventh grade I was in Serrano, Beatty eighth grade, Citrus Valley High School in Redlands in ninth grade when they first opened up the school. And it, was it was only freshmen and sophomores there. So why, was, are they, why are you going to so many different schools? Like, what's, <laughs> you're, what's going on? Are your yeah. parents trying to hide you or what? Like, what's going on? Were <laughs> no, you a troublemaker? You know Were, what? Were you getting fights and stuff? <laughs> what's going on? You know what? So seventh grade, I, I was not a good student. I Okay. I was, and, and I don't advise this anybody, I was ditching school a lot. Okay. And I ended up getting in trouble, of course, because I was absent all the time. Mm -hmm. So then my parents pulled me out of that school because they noticed it was the people that I was hanging out with. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then they moved me. I went to Beatty in Highland, which I had cousins there. So, you know, they were kind of like, we're going to keep you all together, you know, so you're going to behave. Mm. So I did, you know, I went there. I made a lot of friends and... um I, that was a really good year. And then from there, I went to Citrus Valley High School, which was in Redlands. And then that I was like on a, I, I think it's called like a contract or something because gotcha. I wasn't living in the district, but my, oh. my aunt was. So I was um, living with her, but they kind of had, um, they, so they, they knew I was from San Bernardino district, but they allowed me to go there, but on a contract. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't mess up. I couldn't have any bad grades. I had to be in school, like on time and everything. But of course, me being non disciplined, I <laughs> got myself kicked out of there because I wasn't, uh, okay. <laughs> you okay. know. And I don't advise that you guys go to school and stay on top of everything. Uh, so Actually. then they, they kicked me out of there and I went to Sanji because that was my home school. 
Mm-hmm. So then I went there. Um, and then from there, uh, junior year, I actually wanted to get homeschooled. So I went wow. to, yeah, I went to options for youth. Why uh, did you want to get homeschooled? Um, during that time, my, um, my mom was pregnant with one of my younger sisters. So I, it's me being the firstborn and I have a sister who's four years younger than me. Mm-hmm. And then I have a brother. He's my only brother. He's the middle child. Uh, we're about 12 years apart. I see. Whoa. And then, yeah. And then my, my sister that my, I'm mentioning that my, that my mom was pregnant with, um, at that time, my mom was working and my dad was working and my mom was a little stressed out cause she was, uh, already thinking I have to go back to work, but I don't really have anybody here. So I was to like, watch the kid. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Like I I'm okay with being homeschooled. Like just, you know, there's this school called options for youth. Um, this one in particular was, is right by the Inland Center mall. So, um, one of my friends had mentioned it to me. And so I was like, Oh, you know, this kind of like falls into place, you know, like if you put me in homeschool, mom, I can stay home. And then like one day out of the week, go to school, turn in all my work and all that stuff. So that worked out. So I was homeschooled for my whole junior year. But um, I was so behind on credits. Damn. Yeah, that <laughs> Dang. That if I didn't like for my senior year, they were telling me that if you don't go to continuation school, at least you wouldn't be graduating on time. Yeah. So, so I ended up going to San Andreas High School in Highland mm-hmm. for my senior year. And I think that was the best thing that happened because I ended up graduating on time for one. I graduated on time, but I also graduated uh, with a high with a high GPA uh, and then high honors. And I actually had a scholarships too. And I feel yeah. like I wouldn't have had that had I gone to like you know, the regular school. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, if you're still going to regular high school, it's like still try your best, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Don't be uh, a troublemaker like yeah. Linda. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> I probably don't look like it, you <laughs> know? But I've like grown a lot. And if I look back and I'm just like, dang, that's crazy. So now I'm the guidance to my younger siblings that I wish I had, mm-hmm. you know, while growing up because I wasn't you. really like that. And my parents were working all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't really have what I felt I needed looking back, but... Now I'm in a position where I can be that for my younger siblings. Which is good. And, you know, yeah. it could have been a lot worse. You could have been, like, in a gang. You could have yeah. had your face tattooed. True. You yes, know? that's true. A lot a lot of things could have happened, but it didn't get worse than than what I did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, than who I was. But I, I think it all happened, and it molded me into who I am now. Of course, yeah. Because, I, I mean, you kind of... I feel like when you experience things, you... I mean, either learn from it or you don't learn from it but for me I learned from it and I feel like it made me a little bit more responsible Mm. you know take take responsibility take accountability and you know if you if you didn't like where you were you have the you know um you have the possibility to change it for yourself so yeah I I wouldn't change anything but now I know I can be that person for other people and help guide them yeah especially Mm -hmm. family exactly all right so continue (laughs) our story you know she's accountability a woman that's saying accountability I like that (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, you know, so continue us to, to our journey, you know, so you got your scholarships and yeah. graduated high school. So what happens next? Yeah. So um, when I was in high school, uh, my senior year, I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do after high school. I just knew yeah. that I wanted to make my mom and dad proud. Right. Like, By graduating. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, I feel like a lot of people are in that position when they're in their senior year. They're like, I don't like, what do I do next? And right. I feel like they just say, hey, go to college. Like, Yeah, typically I feel like that's what would happen is, you know, graduate and go to college. And, um, you know, I wanted to do that only because I knew that's what my mom and dad wanted. And my grandpa from my dad's side would talk about me going to college and then, you know, um, well, getting into a university and becoming a nurse and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that was always lodged in the back of my head that I needed to do that. Mm hmm. But I never really knew what I wanted to do. I just knew I want to make them proud, especially because I messed up a lot before, uh. you know. So um, when I got those scholarships, I actually got them to, uh, for nursing. So mm. I had maybe about two of them or three scholarships, maybe like one grant or something like that. Okay. So then wow. I, yeah, I actually graduated high school with the idea of becoming a nurse originally. Mm. And then when I got into college and I think after my first year, 
I was feeling like this isn't for me. I don't like, I don't really want to do this, you know, but I still, I still wanted to do it just because I wanted to make my parents, parents happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I love them so much. They're my everything. So I, you know, I went on, I, I didn't become a nurse, but I did get into, um, uh, medical office administration. Gotcha. So I'm still in the field, but I'm not the nurse. Got gotcha. you. Know? No CNA for you. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> so yeah, um, CNA is serious work. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've I've actually had friends that have told me or um, what are the other ones? LVNs. Yeah. LVNs. Yeah. RNs. Uh -huh. RNs yeah. 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 So you know, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be the nurse, but I'm still gonna be in the field. So at least they can be proud of me a little yeah. bit more. You know. So I I went to college. I actually went to a trade school and got my wow. certification and everything. So, you know, I'm very grateful that I still did that because that gave me um, the solidity that I needed uh, to at least like have an income and everything mm -hmm. while I f tried to figure out what I wanted to do and what I, what I wanted to be. So in between that time, though, that's when modeling came up. So when I was in trade school... Um, I think it was a trade school yeah because i was working two jobs i want to say so i was going to school mm -hmm. working two jobs and um i actually was working at a movie theater and a bridal shop in riverside okay so, <laughs> okay and i was coming to school out here in san bernardino so um i remember one shift and i won't ever forget this because i feel like this is kind of what jump started my career too in like modeling um I was working at the movie theater one night and I was working the closing shift and my friend, I've known my friend since uh, high school, freshman year. We've been friends and we're still friends now. I love her so much too. But you want to give her a shout out? Yeah. Mariah, if you're watching this. <laughs> you better be watching yeah. this, Mariah. Shit. I know. I'm going to send this to her. Shots fired. <laughs> Yeah, no, I have to give her some recognition because she was the one who kind of, I don't even know if she realizes that she was one of the people that really kind of, you know, opened a door for me without knowing it. Mm -hmm. Like, so one night I was working my movie theater job in Riverside and she messaged me out of the blue on a text message. She was like, hey, I have to, I have this thing in L.A. that I'm going to do uh, for a music video. And uh, she said, do you want to come with me? Can you just drive me at least? And I was like, uh... I was like, I'm, you know, okay, yeah, I'll drive you, you know. Sure, why not? What, what, what else do I have to do besides close this theater? <laughs> so <laughs> she was saying that um, she had to be there at, I think, like, 11 p.m. was, like, the call time or something. And 11 p.m.? Yeah, it was one of those night shoots. Wow. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. So I had it's no... Good thing you went with her. Right, yeah. yeah. I had no idea how these things went because I've never been on set for anything like that. And yeah. I've I honestly didn't even, like... I just was like, okay, I'm just going to go because I'm, you know, I have nothing else to do. I'm a good friend. And of course, I want to support her. So um, I ended up driving her out there. And then when we get there, she was like, okay, can you get off with me? And I was like, get off with you. I was like, I like you just wanted me to drive you. You know, so I was like, yeah. I thought I was going to just sit here and wait. Gotcha. What or, else do you mean get off with you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second, hold on, because I, mind you, getting out of the theater, I smell like popcorn, and oh, you're, this I, is right after work. You're driving literally her. right after work. Got you. Yeah, so I had, uh, yeah, I just probably looked like like a mess, like like a tired mess. But mm. um, she's like, okay, you're gonna get off, and then I was like, no, like you didn't tell me to get off. I just thought I was gonna drive you, and she was like, come on, please, just get off. So then I was like, okay, fine, like I'll get off with you, and so. Um, we had the, so at that time there was a bus like a shuttle picking up people from like the parking area mm -hmm. and they were driving them up to the shooting area and while we were waiting for the shuttle another girl came and um her boyfriend i think it was like her boyfriend or somebody was like hey can i drop her off with you guys and <laughs> so we were like yeah you know have her come with us so then uh, she actually was a model that came from san francisco just for that shoot wow yeah this so, is in la this was in LA. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, uh, we, so we, we went up to the site and this music video shoot was for G easy. This okay. was for his video, me, myself and I. Okay. Yeah. So this is a couple of years back. And so, um, we get up there and everything and my friends like, okay, like come into, uh, come into the, um, to the dressing room area. And I was like, like, 
like what if they like I'm not even supposed to be here so what if they like kick me out that's gonna be embarrassing you know <laughs> so then um so then I'm like okay I guess like I'll just go in there with you if they tell me something then I'm leaving so she's like okay well you know you're gonna be fine just come and so I get in there and I'm waiting with my friend, with everybody else, because it was a packed house of people just for this video shoot. A lot of girls, you know, some men were there. And the girl who was with us from the parking area, she was asking me, oh, so from, from what agency are, are you from? Like, who, like, who's your agent? Asking me. And I was yeah. like, uh, I was like, I don't have an agent. And she was yeah. like, what? And she was like, wait, she's like, you do model, right? And I was like, uh, like I felt so weird because I was like, I'm on the spot right now. I'm not even supposed to be here. <laughs> it's like I just got, I just <laughs> threw some popcorn in the trash like an yeah. hour ago. Like exactly, I was. Mm. I'm all like, I hope I don't stink. That part, like low key, I'm kind of <laughs> hungry right now. Like <laughs> a nap would would hit the spot. Yeah, but so I, I, you know, I was kind of like, um, I'm just here for my friend, and she was like, wait, but you look like a model. You should be modeling, and I was kind of like, uh, you know, like people have told me that. And she was like, well, you know, you should do this. Like she was like, like giving me game. Like this is what you should do. Like do this, hit this person up, use this site. And at that time, um, model mayhem was a big thing for models. It's still existing, I think, but I don't use it anymore. I haven't used it in years. Um, I've actually, I, I didn't really find like any utilization from it anymore. But at the time she was like, this is really big right now. And for you starting off, like this would be great for you. So Anyway, she like gave me all these all the tips and details. So it's so crazy because uh-huh. this is just my opinion. You would think, especially in that industry, that people would probably be more like two faced and like trying to hide information as opposed to giving game. Right. But she was actually yeah, she was helping. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah okay. but that's true because you would expect that people would just try to like gatekeep everything. But yeah. No, she was kind of just like shocked. Like, why aren't you modeling? And yeah, so uh, from that point on, I actually did get thrown into hair hair and makeup and I did get thrown into wardrobe with, and I didn't even have any intention of doing that. I mm-hmm. just thought I was going to be there just for my friend. So they didn't even question me or anything. They just did my hair. They did everything and they threw me in the on set for the video and everything. So I wasn't in, in that video. Um, that was like the first big thing that ever happened for me unintentionally. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how it works. I know. Right. And um, I'm super thankful for that friend too. Um, her and I, we, we don't really keep in contact too much, but uh, you know, from time to time, like, I'll, like we'll see each other like on social media, but mm-hmm. I see more of her, but she's doing really big things and I'm happy for her, but I won't ever forget like how nice she was being tor- towards me. Um, so that happened. But I, I also want to acknowledge, too, that my friend Mariah, she was one of my friends who pushed me into doing all that. But while I was in high school, my senior year, I had a group of friends. Um, one, one person um, in particular, his name is Noah Wolf. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He makes music. But he actually, mm-hmm. at the time, was like, like, you should model. And I was so shy during that time. I was like, me? I'm like, I'm not going to model, you know, yeah. but he actually, he did like my first shoot, like on the side of the school wearing a friend's clothing line. And okay. he was like, he was like, let me just take pictures of you. So he did that. The TV show friends. Uh, no. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Oh, his, it's a friend, a like friend's a local, clothing line. I like got a you. Local, yeah. Uh-huh. Got you. A local I, was like, I was like, yeah, I just watched something recently. They're talking about friends. Okay. Got <laughs> I'm you. Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. So, um, when he did that, I had seen the picture. I was like, Oh, like, that looks nice, you know, and this was just on the side of our school and everything, but um, he just kept telling me, like, like, man, you should just do it, like, just start modeling, and I would just be, like, so in denial, like, I don't even look like, you know, I should model, but, he, you know, him and a bunch of my other friends would be like, you should do it, and I just left it, like, on the back burner. That was senior year, so then fast forward to, um, you know, finishing trade school and everything, and then when I did that g music video, I kind of was interested more. I was like, okay. Let me give this a try. Yeah, especially if my friend, um, my friend that I met that day at the Jeezy shoot was kind of mistaking me for a model. I was like, "You want to give her a shout out?" Uh, sure. Yeah, it's uh, up to you. It doesn't matter. I'll, yeah, I have to like hit her up because we haven't spoken a while. Uh huh. But yeah, her name is Frances. So uh, yeah, I'll probably send this to her and like let her know, like, hey, you know, I mentioned you here. 
But um, yeah, so Francis was the one that kind of made me realize like this girl doesn't even know me and she thinks that I have the potential to model, you know, because I always thought like, oh, people are just being nice to me, like my friends and my family who would tell me you should model. I just thought like they're just being nice. I I never saw that potential in me. And um, so, yeah, I had, you know, my, my friends that were close to me that would tell me like, you know, you're really pretty. You should model. But to me, I didn't see that. Like. I just felt like I got made fun of a lot for being so skinny and bony and like, Uh you know, long legs, long arms. And at the time I had like really bad skin. So I was just like, where where Mm. are they seeing this beauty from? Yeah. like You're more like in your shell. like Yeah. uh huh. And I had braces too for a while. Oh, the braces wife. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Did you ever have the rubber bands on your braces? I did. Yeah. God, did they ever snap and like hit your lip ever? Yeah, I, I did have that happen a couple times. I gotcha. remember feeling that pain. Did you have braces before? I did. You did? And like, you wore those it would bands. snap and like hit my lip and I'd be like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Or um, did you ever have retainers after? Did you have retainers? I did, yeah. Okay, you so I too. remember um, I would chew gum sometimes. With your retainer. With the retainer. And it would get like stuck in the retainer. i like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's all stretchy now yeah i'm like oh i gotta take the whole god. retainer out like pull it off it's like dear god i gotta why, do, why am i oh doing this oh my goodness you would just throw your gum in your mouth Are i you... would like start chewing it and then like it gets stuck in the retainer and like oh damn yeah. it take the whole retainer out that's funny yeah <laughs> yeah I wasn't thinking I remember those days yeah. i actually had retainers for my bottom or no you know what both of my top and my bottom they were the um invisaligns Oh, yeah, the Invisalign era. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. That's what I had. And I remember I lost those. And my mom was like, I'm not getting you anymore. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I hadn't. I mean, I actually had aligners again just recently, but then I ended up losing those. So, <laughs> gotcha. I had the I, wire ones. Yeah. It's like plastic and then wire. Yeah, yeah. On uh-huh. the front. I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah. The, the metal piece right here. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. But yeah, I feel like I feel like the aligners were, were easy to, to lose because they were you know, see through. Yeah. Like, like place gosh. them somewhere and forget that they're there. Yeah. Like, damn, the cat, cat got it. <laughs> cat got it. Yeah. The dog ate it. Thought it was something else. Yeah. For reals. Uh, good times though. Oh yeah. my gosh. How long did you have your braces for? I think I was a uh, middle school when I had my braces. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. So probably at least a year or so. Oh, you only had them for like a year? I don't remember. I'm not going to lie. Probably a like ago. a year. Yeah. Lie, definitely a while ago. Yeah. I think I had my <sighs> braces like all throughout high school and i got them off my senior year yeah i got them my freshman year beginning of my freshman year and then senior year came and then i got them off yeah and for a long time yeah gotcha mm-hmm. yeah i remember when they used to tighten them oh my gosh like, i remember that oh and then your mouth would be so sore gotcha yeah for all of the braces people you know what we're talking about y'all know what's going on <laughs> right so um when did you decide to go full force into this modeling world um yeah so modeling so i want to say that whole g easy v- music video thing happened 2015 maybe i graduated 2013 and then 2015 that happened so i think that year going into 2016 that's when i started to to fill the pool to just do it more okay so i i used all of the tips that that Francis gave me and what's I, one of the tips so I, I probably wouldn't advise it now but okay but at the time she told me to make an account on model mayhem okay and um I know that that's still existent but I, I've heard some things like scammers on there and everything you know oh at that do time, tell do tell us about the scammers <laughs> what what's talk about scammers yeah oh man. tell us about it so um so at the time model mayhem was like kind of new i think it's for photographers models makeup hair artists wardrobe stylists like anybody that you can think in the entertainment industry they had accounts on there and they would kind of like collaborate uh do tfps which would be a trade for photos or trade Mm -hmm. for print so you would kind of give your free time in exchange for those um so that was really big and when i made my account on there i started to see a bunch of work coming to me Mm -hmm. and so i was like oh you know, maybe I can do this then, you know, people are interested in working with me. So at the time, you know, it was, it was good. Um, but I've heard now, I've heard some stories that, you know, there's creeps on there and they like want to get models isolated and 
yeah, I don't want to say too many graphic things, but... No, it's you fine. Know. Please be graphic so we can understand. So we can be educated here. We're trying to educate people. Yeah, yeah, people. okay. So, you know, just like assaults happening. Like, really? Yeah, uh-huh. Or there was one um, there was one story that I heard where this photographer was trying to get, you know, a young girl to shoot like a bondage shoot. You know, are you familiar Whoa. with bondage? Yeah, like yeah. tied up. Tying yeah. up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Um, Luckily, I guess the mom, the girl's mom went with her and then they realized where the location was like, this is like a secluded place. You know, this is weird. But um, something had happened where the mom was like, I don't like how this looks, you know, and there it wasn't like a setup or nothing. Because usually when you go on set, there's, you know, lights, there's um, like a whole like if you're going to use a backdrop or something like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, when it's, a it's photo when it's professional. Yeah. yeah. So it looked nothing like that. I guess it was just like emptiness everywhere. And so the mom was like, we're getting out of here. But I guess come to find out that that person, the photographer just, he had this whole other idea. Maybe probably was going to try to kidnap her or something or, you Jeez. know, yeah. Assaults happen though too, you know? So I would just advise like for any new models, or even like if you're, you know, just still modeling and you've had your experience, just always like do your background checks on people. Got like, you. you know, look, look and see who they worked with and ask the person who they worked with. Like, hey, you know, this person wants to collaborate. I just want to know how your experience was with this person, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, he, and for me, too, I like to see their tagged peoples, like who, who, they, who they've tagged or who they've worked with. Just so I can know, like, OK, this person's, you know, uh, they have some credibility to them. But if you're just working with just anybody, you run the possibility of something happening to you, you know, and gotcha. I would I would not want to, you know, hear that somebody was assaulted because they didn't do their due diligence. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. That's why it's always wise mm -hmm. to like go with somebody. Yeah. To like a shoot. Especially Definitely. If it's unfamiliar. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, always have somebody with you. Share your location, too, because we can do that. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. Thank goodness. Wow. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I would just advise, you know, Model Mayhem, I, I guess you could use it, but I wouldn't really, especially if you have like Instagram and you yeah. know, that's like one of the biggest ways that you can get your work. You know, for me, I've seen that it's one of the biggest ways you can get your work. To help grow. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Uh, networking and everything like that. But also you want to like show up to um, to gigs or if there's like a big event going on because they do have big group shoots happening. Like there's accounts mm. on Instagram you can follow. So, you know, you want to network in person too, you know, you want to show up to places, show them who you really are. And yeah. like, you know, that helps out also a lot. Yeah. Cause the screen could lie. The camera could lie a lot. Yes, yes. it can. <laughs> the camera can lie a yes, lot. Yes, it can. Mm, mm -hmm. Damn filters. You ladies got lucky the with filters. The dang filters. <laughs> Man, <laughs> filters have changed the world. For real. It's yeah. crazy. They're fun. But when you use it on a daily basis, then it's kind of a scam. <laughs> Low key. <laughs> wow. You know, I want I want to actually talk about photos and photo shoots, right? So, mm -hmm. um, when you're doing a photo shoot, right, do you have to get into a certain headspace before you go into a modeling shoot? You know what? Yeah, I feel like yes. For me, yeah. Sometimes, most of the time, yeah, I have to like prepare myself. The and I feel like depending on what kind of shoot you're doing, because I've kind of done a lot of them. I've done like beauty i've done fashion i've even done like um fashion shows and stuff like that but if it's one of those where it's like a small shoot and i know the people already then i feel like you know i don't feel so uptight or anything like that i feel like okay you know i know everybody and we're all gonna get along you know because sometimes you can go on on set with somebody and you don't know what to expect so you're like okay i need to like you know, act a certain way. I need to make sure I, like, I don't, like, for me, I don't want to just be a chatterbox and speak, you know, even if I'm, if I'm not spoken to. Mm -hmm. So I want to, like, you know, have politeness and stuff. Um, but I think, I think I'm kind of at a point where I, I guess I do want to make sure I come off a certain way, you know, because usually the first impression, like, people hang on to yeah so yeah so yeah i definitely want to make sure if if i'm if i'm ever meeting new people on this set that i want to leave a good first impression mm -hmm. so i try to tell myself you know you're gonna go in there be polite smile because people like to see people smile yeah, and say hello yeah. yeah that's you know a big thing for anybody that's trying to model show you up know. on time yes show up on time which i still have to work with sometimes <laughs> 
a little inside joke for us. Yeah. You guys can imagine. Uh, yeah, but I, th- I think um, sometimes you have to prepare yourself when you're going on set. Got you mm-hmm. in the right headspace, right? Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. yep. you. Do you do like some wusa? You talk to yourself to say smile, be friendly. Is that kind of yeah. like your go-tos? Yeah, you know what? I I do that. Yeah, I do do that. Especially if my morning started off crappy. I, okay. have to, I have to tell myself, you know, it's going to be a good day. You're going to meet good people, you know. Um, but lately I've implemented prayer a lot Ooh. before doing anything, you know, before okay. leaving my house. And if I'm doing something big, then, yeah, I definitely, you know, need to have my prayer in because I feel like that helps me a lot more. Got you. Did you pray today? I did. What yes. was your prayer about today? <laughs> um, to keep it short, I actually prayed um because when I pray, I pray as if I'm talking like to you, you know, gotcha, I, I, yeah. pray, I pray, you know, to God as if I'm talking, like he's right there. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how you build a bond and relationship. So I was praying, you know, telling God, you know, I'm going to meet Antonio today. I have this podcast, you know, that we're doing. <laughs> and I, I was pretty much saying, um, you know, for his grace over us. And uh, if there's anything he needs me to put out there that, you know, I speak it. And um, pretty much like for it to be a successful, you know, interview for us and that, that it reaches people that it needs to, you know, be reached out to. So, yeah. And amongst other things, too, because I have a busy day today. So I was like, you know, asking for his protection and thanking him that he's always protecting me and he's always there, even if I feel like he's not there, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, yeah, definitely. I, I prayed that this would be a good time for us. Nice. And I feel like it is. It's, I feel great. I was good. nervous earlier, but I feel like calm. Got you. <laughs> I told her. I told her. She didn't. She didn't believe me though. But <laughs> uh, hey, it all, like tea, right? That's what I was saying. Yeah, right? like, tea. like a cup of tea and a cold day, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did exactly I lie? Exactly what it is. Did I lie? You're right. You were right. See, I'm not a liar. <laughs> um, I'm curious. So, was your prayer life always this strong, or did it just happen? And how did it happen? If Good it wasn't? question. Yeah. No. Um, it wasn't always as strong. Okay. I feel like just this year, I started to up like upgrade my prayer life. Before, you know, I've I feel like a lot of us we we do believe that there's a God, mm-hmm. you know. And I was one of those people where I was like, you know, yeah, I believe God's real, but I never had a prayer life. I like I would pray, but it wouldn't be the prayers that I would do now. It would just be a quick you know, thank you God for my family type of thing, you know, Mm -hmm. like just quick and easy. But now I take time to, to pray and I try to give myself at least five to like 10 minutes, you know, especially when I wake up. But, um, just this year, definitely it's, I've upped my prayer game (laughs) and I honestly, I think back, I'm like, how did I even, like, I was so stressed out and overwhelmed all the time, like the years before. And I'm like, this is what I was missing, Mm -hmm. you know, at least having a prayer life. Yeah. Got you. Uh-huh. Do you know what triggered it? Um She does know. I I actually it's it's actually kind of She does know. <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of events that had happened. Um you know, well I feel like it's a lot to say. But yeah, I actually did have some things that triggered it. Um definitely I feel like losing some people in my life, you mm-hmm. know, people expiring. Um, which happened in the past two years, maybe transitioning over transitioning over. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that better, but, uh, yeah, that happened. But I feel like this year I was dealing a lot more with, um, uh, so it looked, so from the outside, it looked like I was, you know, accomplishing a lot. I was so happy. I had a lot of things going for myself, but you know, behind closed doors, I felt I was missing something still. Okay. Like I was feeling sad sometimes and I didn't know why cuz I seen everything happening for me and you know, people love loved me like my I have my loved ones around me, but I still felt like there's something like still weighing me down and I couldn't figure it out. So, uh this year I kind of had, you know, some spiritual warfare happening with me where okay you know so i just felt i i needed you know i needed god more because i knew i had everything else you know i was like working all the time i had all these friends and you know i was you know i was also like indulging in like quick pleasures like you know drinking and like you know smoking which you know you guys 
don't <laughs> abuse substances, okay? Got you. <laughs> but um, I'm curious about the warfare. Can you enlighten us a little bit about the warfare? Yeah, the yeah. The spiritual warfare that it was? So I never really knew what that was until this year, like the beginning of the year came around. Um, I So, you know, I believe we're all spirits in our bodies, yeah. right? You know, mm-hmm. and um, we're not the only spirits here, you know? Okay. So there's also the... I guess you can say like evil spirits, enemy spirits, you know, sure. that want to wreak havoc in your life. Sure. And they do, you know, sometimes people m- might mistake it. Like, why is God doing this to me? But it's not always God doing it. It can be the enemy doing it. So I, even though I felt, or I was seeing that a lot of good things were happening for me, I just still felt like, you know, friendships and like, relationships and like like with my family and stuff like that like things were just like going sour so I was like okay what am I missing like there's something going on and I was like just feeling that it wasn't a physicality it was more like spirituality wise that that I needed to strengthen so I you know I've dealt with some paranormal things happening too and I'm like okay this is this is not like Okay, I've never dealt with paranormal before. Okay. But I've had like some Ooh. instances where... You, we have to hear a story now. She can't just tell us <laughs> paranormal happened and we're just going to pass right by. Yeah. You got to hit us with a story, Linda, yeah. of a paranormal activity. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Door slamming or what? Okay, hit us. Um, hit us. So, okay, so I, I don't want to get too much into detail okay. about this one, but yeah. I'm going to keep it short because okay. I don't want to trigger anything. But um, mm. so I have... Um, this one experience in the beginning of the year, which I feel like was the the jump start too for my prayer life. Um, I went to Arizona with my friend CJ, okay. and we went to go visit our friend um, Mama. We call her Mama for short. So we went to her house, and this was probably midnight by the time we get to Arizona because we left at nighttime. Okay. So we get to her house, and. Um, I was asking her, like, oh, how do you like it here? Because she had mentioned, you know, I just moved here. So uh, it, it was like a condo kind of thing. So we were, like, upstairs in her, and excuse me, in her place. So then I was like, oh, how is it here? You know, it's nice. It's co- it's cozy. It's comfy. You know, it feels nice here. She goes, oh, I love it. It's it's way better than my last place. And I was like, really? How so? So she's like, I don't know. I just felt like it was haunted. And then I was like, your, your last place was haunted? And she was like, yeah. So, um Anyway, she was kind of explaining some things that would she would experience at her last place. And I've never heard of things like that happening before. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, what? And she was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, this would happen. That would happen. I don't want to get too much in, into the whole yeah, story. No, but, good. you know, the more she was talking about it, the more like, like, Icky, yeah, eerie, eerie I yeah, felt. Yeah. So then um i was sitting on her couch like you know sitting on one couch she was sitting on another couch and then our friend cj on the floor we're all just like chit-chatting and mind you it's about two o'clock almost in the morning yeah okay so then while we're talking her door is probably like kind of where you are but like a little further back like where the wall is Mm -hmm. so then she's talking about all these things and i'm like oh like this is crazy you know like good thing you live here now you know and um from my peripheral vision, I seen her doorknob jiggling. It was moving. And so I kind of tried to ignore it. I was like, maybe I'm just seeing things, you know? Got you, yeah. But then my friend CJ kind of like looked over too. And so I was like, oh, I, I, I was, yeah, I was like, yeah. I wasn't the only one that saw that. And it jiggled twice. And um, like we looked at her like, is somebody like at your door? It's like, is anyone supposed to be here? We're, and she was like, no, it's 2 a.m. Like, I'm not expecting anybody here. And I was like, well, your door is moving. So then she's like, no, 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 I don't, like, I don't know. Like, I guess she didn't notice it, but we did. So then anyways, she wanted to see if there was anyone outside the door. And I'm the tallest one out of us three. So okay. I was like, let me look through the people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I looked and since we're upstairs, we couldn't really see like downstairs, but from the hallway, I didn't see anybody. So I was like, there's nobody there. Like, that's so strange. Like, how is your door moving? So then, um, she goes, yeah, I don't know. She's like, maybe they went downstairs. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, but I, I just don't really feel like there was anyone there to begin with, you know? Because, like, I feel like we would kind of hear, like, if somebody was there. Like, but so anyway, she opens up the door because she wants to check downstairs. And as soon as she opened that door, it, I felt the whole room, like, energy shift. 
Uh-huh. And I wasn't the only one because even CJ felt it because she like latched onto me and she was holding on to me. And she was like, no, no, like, no, 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 like close the door, you know? And I just kind of stood there like, whoa, like I felt it got heavy mm-hmm. and I felt like fear was like taking over me. But uh-huh. I was like, I was like, this is weird. I was like, something's in here with us. And so she was like, what? Like my friend mom was like, what? Like, what is it? Like I could tell she knew too, but she was just like, what is it? Like, you know, I didn't have answers. I was like, there's just something in here. So she shuts the door and I'm just like, uh, I instantly just like knew like to tell it to leave. Cause that's what I would see people doing like in movies mm-hmm. or like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, if you're not of love and light, you need to get out of here. Like, you don't belong here. Like, this is our personal space. Like, you're invading yeah. our space and all that stuff. And it didn't go away until I started, like, praying in my head. I was like, Jesus, like, I don't know what this is, but we need you. I was, like, calling out for Jesus. So then as soon as that happened, I was calling out. Like, it just, like, drained. Like, like you know, if, like, you're, like, and, like, if you see water, like, draining down the sink or something. Like, yeah. It felt like that. Like, it was, like, a breath of fresh air. I was like... Mm-hmm. I was like, what the heck is that? I've never dealt with that before in my life. So so I, I started to realize like, dang, that like it didn't change until I started, you know, praying. So I feel like at that point, that's when I was like, okay, I definitely need to, you know, have a strong prayer life because if that little prayer that I did helped out, like I can only imagine like, you know, fully giving, you know, conversations to God, like what, how my life can change, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, from that point on, I, you know, I I did start praying a lot more and, you know, I kind of also had other, like some encounters where like, not, 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 not that things were moving, but I would just have like weird dreams. And I'm like, like, am I the only one that dreams these things? And then I started looking stuff up, like, on YouTube. And people were talking about it, too. And I'm like, okay, so I'm not going crazy, you know? But um, I definitely felt the pull to get closer to God. And so I did. So this year, it's been very transformational for me. Love it. Yeah. And I've seen my life change a lot. And within myself, too. Like, you know, how I mentioned before, I felt like I was missing something and mm-hmm. I was sad all the time, even though when I would go out with friends and stuff, you know, I seemed to be like their peace, you I know, see. like they would be happy, which I mean, is good. You know, I don't want my friends to feel like they can't have me around. Mm-hmm. But when I would go home or something or like if I was by myself, I just felt like like I didn't really have much fulfillment, I guess you can say. Got you. Yeah. So definitely getting getting strong in my prayer life and getting closer to God, like helped me out a lot. I have a lot more peace. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful testimony. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and um, I, I love how you said um, the prayer life's a conversation. Yeah. Because um, in the book that I wrote, 10 Things That Your Parents Should Have Taught You, I have a part in there that says like faith helps mm. and the importance of having faith and prayer life, whatever, you know, your relationship with God is and I think people are really focused on religion, but I think the real thing is having a relationship with God, however you view God or the universe, but having that conversation because Mm -hmm. I think it's important to express yourself to, if you believe in a creator, the universe, whatever, that way, just like how we're having a conversation right now, it's important because I think, what did I say in my line, in the book? It's like God is waiting for you to, for that phone call from you. He's just waiting. So it's up to you to pick up the phone and call. Right. right. I agree. I def 100%. I agree with you. It's, yeah. it's it, to me, I began to realize how you mentioned that it's more about relationship than it is religion, you know? Yeah. And I think that's kind of where there's a gap in the bridge for some people. You know, they, I think it's not talked about enough that getting closer to God is like having a conversation with your friend or like, you know, with your spouse or your partner, whoever it may be, you know, yeah. um, definitely having the faith that there, that he's there, even though you can't physically see him the way like we can see each other, yeah. you know, it's just having the faith. So yeah, I agree with you 100%. I haven't read your book, but like, I need to read it. I, I definitely <laughs> need to get my hands on it. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you, we'll, 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 we'll guide her, we'll guide her, you know, yeah. there's a copy right there. We'll, we'll, we'll guide you on it. <laughs> um, you know, and go back to the photo shoots, right? Yeah. Um, shout out we to sh- God, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to God. Um, all glory to God. Yes. Um, 
universe, however you guys want to call it. You yeah, know, anyway. however. Um, I think, okay, I won't go to, I was going to go in like, uh, how can you not believe in a God? You know, the sun rises, the complexities of the human you. body. We could talk about but, that uh, on our own Yeah, time. another time. <laughs> but let's go back to the photo shoot, right? Yeah, so, we strayed away a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's all good we're conversations. Having, we're, having, we're having fun out here. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to photo shoots and stuff like yeah. that, like how, for you, how comfortable or how much um, pre-knowledge of a photographer that you need to know in order to do certain photo shoots? Like, for example, like, okay, I've done photo with this guy before. Mm -hmm. I know I'm comfortable. I know his style or her style. Mm -hmm. Or is it like, you know, I've never met this photographer before. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, what's your preference and what's your take? Um, Does that make sense? I, I think I get it. Gotcha. I think I'm understanding. Um, so I feel like it, depending on what kind of shoot you're doing, because for me, you know, I've had experience with doing fashion. I've had experience doing swimsuit and lingerie. I've had experience doing um, just regular, like, casual looks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like when you get more into doing, like, the swimsuits and the lingerie looks, like, you definitely want to know who you're shooting with. Because, um, you know, I feel like that gets a little bit more, uh, like, personal. But um, definitely you want to do your research on the person if you don't know them already, um, especially if they haven't worked with anybody that you've worked with. And then, of course, you want to bring somebody with you to those kind of shoots. Um, but if you've already worked with the person and you know how they, how they work and everything, then I feel like, you know, just keep building that relationship because you can always meet new people through them and vice versa. So um, I hope that answers your question. I don't know if I didn't really understand it. Too yeah, well. <laughs> no, I think it's mostly about basically being comfortable around yeah. photographers, right? Because yeah. you're doing certain things, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. know, and I see on your page, you have a lot of revealing. Mm -hmm. Most of your stuff is revealing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what, where I was headed for like a while, um, especially before this year. I definitely was on the whole like lingerie, swimsuit type of avenue, which I mean, I wasn't actually headed for it in the beginning of my modeling i just kind of thought like i want to do like commercials and stuff like that you know but then um i kind of felt when i did have the chances to do uh lingerie and all of that it empowered me more because before as i mentioned in the beginning that i was so shy and self-conscious of myself because i was called like skinny bone jones all the time long okay. legs. like i just felt like like I, I didn't really feel the empowerment on myself or within myself to be able to do things, to step out of my boundaries. So when I started doing lingerie and swimsuit, I started to like actually appreciate myself more. And not that I was trying to like make myself look raunchy or anything. I just thought, you know what, maybe I can like, you know, do this, but like in a, I guess, classy way you know, but I mean, everybody probably has their own take on, you know, revealing yourself, yeah. but I've always tried to do it in a tasteful way, like not in a way where it's like, you know, making me look bad, but you know, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of closing that chapter with doing okay. all of that. You know, I kind of want to get more, more back into what I, I originally wanted to do, which was, um, commercials and like high fashion, you know? So mm -hmm. lately I've been doing bridal and I, I love that. I feel so, I feel like, you know, like a princess. <laughs> uh -huh. So I want to do, you know, do more of that. And um, shout out to Ava because she's, she's been one of my um, hair and makeup artists and she's brought me on set a lot to do those. So she's actually helping me to, you know, redirect like how my modeling is going. So nice. not, not so much on the swimsuit and lingerie side, because especially now that I'm closer to God, I'm like, would he be happy with me to continue doing this, you know? Like, and I'm not trying to talk down on anybody else, but it's like for me personally. You yeah. Know? I feel more like at peace with myself, you know, changing my direction. So, yeah, I see. you know what I mean? So you like change, you're uh, changing the brand a little bit yeah. right now. Yeah, rebranding okay, a little. Okay, so basically you didn't get married recently. You were just taking photos yeah, for no. a wedding. <laughs> yeah, Got no. you. I was going to cry. I was like, oh, congratulations on your wedding. Uh, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's yeah, photography. Just, Got you. you know, just being a model. Got you. <laughs> so, you know, going back to like the... I guess the raunchy, not raunchy, the, the classy mm -hmm. raunchy stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there a limit to where you would go? For uh, doing revealing? like Yeah, for um, revealing. Is there like a limit like that you'll say like, no, I won't do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I definitely do have a limit of like my boundaries and stuff. I will not do nude. Okay. <laughs> not, I mean, some people might, you know, do the artistic nudes where they make it look, you know, nice still without looking raunchy. And I've seen, you know, some people take pictures like that. And I'm kind of like, oh, like that looks nice, you know, mm -hmm. when being in the nude. But um, for me, I wouldn't do that. And if I did do that, I'm not showing anybody, you know, that, okay. you know that's just for like my eyes only. Okay. But um, I haven't really done those before, but I have done something called implied, meaning like, you know, you're co you're covering all the parts that need to be covered, but you're you're not like completely clothed, I guess you can say. So like, let's say, for example, I've used like fabrics to cover me up okay. and make it look like artistical in a way. Um, but yeah, my boundaries are, I'm not stripping completely down. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Would you do like pasties? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, pasties. Definitely. That's the one thing that I feel like every model should have is pasties. Okay. You have pasties, have, um, have some boob tape, you know, because I mean, if you're any, if you're like me at all, you don't want to just have them out there like that. You know, mm -hmm. you want to have some type of covering because, you know. I don't know. It's just more of a comfort thing. But yeah, pasty, having pasties. And there's also something else where I've never used it, but I've heard other models using it. Um, it's kind of like invisible underwear, kind of like okay, covering. Interesting. Yeah, I've never used it, but I've heard it. So interesting. Yeah, uh huh. definitely don't want to re be revealing too much. But I mean, if that's your cup of tea, then, you know, I'm not Rock talking it, down right? on anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it reminds <laughs> me like I think little Kim had this dress like years ago, like 20 years ago outfit, like where it's just like flower, flower and a flower. Something like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. Would you ever do something like that? Um, for pictures? Yeah. Probably. Depending okay. on like what's it for? What's it gonna be for? You what's know? it gonna be used for? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm like a Girl Scout cookie ad or something. <laughs> <laughs> if it's for something like that, like a like I mean I wanna say maybe if it was like a designer and they're like, you know, this is something I wanna I wanna showcase you as like you know, the, the front page or, or whatever, if like, I want you to be the person that shows this or whatever, then maybe I might do it. Okay. Maybe okay. it depends. I would have to really look into like, like who's going to be seeing this, you know, and like where, like how big are you trying to like make this look, you know, it depends. True. True. It depends. I'm yeah. a photographer, their, their uh, yeah. direction and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, gotcha. definitely. Got to read the fine print. <laughs> you really, real talk though, real yeah. talk. You never know what these creepos are trying to do. Yeah. Uh huh. Speaking of creepos. You know, like you, like I said, like a lot of your pages, a lot of revealing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, I have to assume, there's probably some sketchy DMs you've been, you've probably gotten. Yeah. 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 What definitely. are some of the things that you've gotten in your DMs that you're like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> some of them are probably kind of funny. Oh, uh, you know? we'll take all of them. But there yeah. has been some where I'm just like, ew, like, got you. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm kind of like, you know what? Uh, I kind of set myself up for that once. <laughs> Low key. Got you. You know, but I've had like, I just have had like accounts. I don't know if they're like spam accounts or if they're like actual people, but you know, they'll, some people will tell me, I have a thousand dollars for you if you, you know, just send me this type of photo or can I just take pictures of you with this or I don't know, just weird things like offering me money. Okay. And I'm like, uh, no. Here's my yeah. cash app. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I, I don't do that like because I don't know what you're going to do with all this. But money is not that important in my life for me to like, I love it, you know, give something like that away, you know. So I've had creeps like that. Um, I've had creeps that just like blatantly tell me like, can I see your boobs? I'm like, no. OK. <laughs> and then I block in them. In the DM? Right? Yeah. Like, OK. Uh -huh. Wow. I mean, I've even had photographers do that to me, too. Yeah. Like okay. on set. And I'm just like no like i feel unsafe now so i'm leaving <laughs> you know wow yeah um, but that's why we gotta have especially if you're a woman you know i mean for men too it's always good to have somebody but like for women especially like always keep somebody with you somebody that you know like you can turn to and be like hey like they just said this to me and i'm not comfortable anymore you know mm -hmm. if you're by yourself i mean if you feel comfortable enough to go on your own then sure but i feel like it's always a good safety measure to have somebody with you because you just never know what the photographer is going to be like especially if this is your first time working with them mm -hmm. yeah totally. so i've had plenty you know creeps <laughs> their intentions yeah yeah what um what's one of the funny ones that the funny dms that you heard uh one of the funny ones mm, probably i don't know i guess just like them saying like i've had somebody say like oh my gosh you're so hot can you uh 
can can we like chat on the phone and i'm just like what <laughs> i've never had people do that to me it's awesome. kind of funny you know because awesome. i'm like they're trying to be friendly but they're like trying to be flirty with me i don't know yeah. it's to me it's kind of funny but i'm not trying to make fun it's just they make me laugh i'm I like i got you like yeah damn <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> sims, man. i'm or, sorry <laughs> Shit. Or, or can i take you out like or somebody recently um during like the halloween season they messaged me and they were like uh kind of writing in third person they were like hi writing to you in hopes that that you let uh that they said something like I'm writing in, in hopes that you let me take you out to the pumpkin patch. And they, they were just like saying it in third person though. But their whole thing was like, I want to take you to the pumpkin patch. Got you. Yeah. Peter wants to take you to the pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah, type of thing. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, like, I didn't even reply. I was just like, this is kind of funny. So, but I don't know. Some people are amusing to me, but then some people are kind of like, I, I, I really don't want to know what you're thinking. Got you. you Block. Know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Got you. Mm-hmm. Man, you can... Shit. <laughs> I swear, sometimes women got some easy money to come through. This is what I would have done if I was you, and I was if that guy was like, okay, yeah, I'll send you a thousand dollars to whatever. Okay, send me the here's my cash app. Send it to me, mm-hmm. and we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. Let him send it. Mm-hmm. Block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Some people have told me that, like how you mentioned, like some girls, some you know, women might have it easy to like getting money. But I feel like I don't know. I'm one of those people. Like if I was to do that. It's going to be on my conscience that Got I, you. like, screwed somebody over. You don't feel right. You know? Yeah. Got uh-huh. you. Yeah, God's watching me. You might have to be like, hey, you know, or, like, here's a good example, right? Like, I was like, hey, I want to talk to you on the phone for half an hour. It's like, okay, we can talk, but I charge 350 for half an hour. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I have thought about that before, where I'm like, if somebody wants to talk to me, then maybe I should charge them, you know, like, for a little bit. But then hey. I'm like, but they're going to probably start telling me things, or maybe even show me something I don't want to see, you know? Like, well, I, when, I don't know. That's when you're like, hey, send me the money. I'll talk to you because you God conscious, right? Mm-hmm. And if they're disrespectful, end immediately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have a point. In the end of the day, you're a businesswoman, right? In the same time, right? So. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. I haven't thought of it that way. Hey. I, I guess I'm always thinking of like what I want to avoid, you know? Which I guess is like a tit for tat. I guess they say, you know, you can win some and lose some when you true. play with it. Yeah, true. But it's like, okay, well. If you really, if you know, if you really want to talk to me, we can talk on the phone. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can have like a, a another phone yeah. that can not be right, like a burner phone or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, blah blah blah, three fifty, half an hour, whatever, <laughs> twenty minutes, fifteen yeah. minutes. Which I, which I, I do have, you know, some friends that have told me they've done that before. Like even just to like message them, they charge them like per yeah. message or something, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds kind of cool. But then I'm like, that sounds like too much work. <laughs> it could, <I> don't. <laughs> or it might be easy money. I, I should probably hire somebody for that. <laughs> you could. There's actually guys that actually pose as women texting other oh, guys. We're exposing people. I'm just kidding. Oh, hey, well, you know, it's a, you know. Yeah. It shows two things. It shows that women are monetizing their their looks and their beauties. And it also yeah. shows that um, the dating market has really changed for a lot of men. Oh, and, for sure. And being comfortable speaking with women. Right. And the only way they feel to do it is they have to pay for it. Right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely the the whole dating scene has changed a lot, I feel like. <laughs> definitely. Okay. That leads me to two things here, folks. <laughs> Number one, since we're talking about monetizing looks and beauty, what's your thoughts on OnlyFans? OnlyFans. What's your thoughts about that? You know what? To tell you the truth, I actually tried it out for a little bit. Okay. Probably about a year ago Mm -hmm. or um, I think it was like a year ago. It probably was more than a year ago now and I did it for a little while, but it wasn't. I was, I was mostly posting pictures on there that I wouldn't post on my Instagram. Like they were like, how can I say this? Like they were more, a little bit more revealing, but they weren't like in the nude revealing, you know? Like, Mm. so I mean, OnlyFans can be good, you know, if it's, if it's making you money, then I mean, more power to you, you know? Um, I, I, I personally don't really, you know, have... I can't really judge people on what they're doing because, you know, I'm not perfect. I've done things too, True. you know, so. So you didn't make it, any income off of the? I, I did. Okay. But I feel like because I didn't use it to the highest potential, like I didn't really see too much, mm-hmm. but I did see the money come in and I was like, this is, this is cool. You know, like I'm going to work and I'm like doing all of my side gigs and I have this going on. I was like, it's kind of cool, but it was kind of tiring. So I feel like at that point, 
That's like, where a manager comes in. Exactly. And that's what I, that's kind of, you know, one of those things where I'm like, I need like a management or something because I'm tired of doing this by myself, mm-hmm. you know. But um, I mean, I feel like if if you're having an OnlyFans and you're, you know, you're it's an income for you and it's, you know, you're not hurting anybody, then I mean, sure, you know, but also got to remember, too, that if you're posting pictures that you wouldn't want like your parents to see, like just know they're going to be there forever. <laughs> yeah. it's Once it's online, it's on there forever. Yeah, yes. That's, that's my train of thought, you know, but as I mentioned, I'm not, I don't want to like judge people either, but just kind of like a little advice, you know, just if you, if you wouldn't want your parents, if your parents wouldn't be happy or, you know, whoever, if you were like your grandparents or somebody, it's kind of where I'm like, uh, if this was to get shown to them, I don't know how they'd feel. And like, that's going to be stuck on me forever. <laughs> yeah. Or your grandkids or whatever. Yeah. But like mama was out here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, eventually Kim Kardashian's kids might have to see her their video. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, that's what, what a lot of people talk about too. And that, that's kind of where I'm like, see, like, I don't know how, I, like it could be good, but then it could be bad at the same time, you know? Yeah. I guess if you explain it right, like, Hey, you know, mom, you know, I like my body. Other people liked it. I got paid for it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't yeah. kissing a horse in the mouth, <laughs> you know. Bestiality. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, the, that's a thing. Yeah, it's that a, is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty mm. disturbing. It's such a. Mm. It's actually in the Bible. Do yeah. Not, yeah, like don't mess with horse, like animals and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. No, that's no. when you know it's. That's when you know people were doing things when the Bible says, "Hey, don't." do this exactly. with animals right yeah shout out deuteronomy <laughs> um all, yep, all wow there. <laughs> you know so you know we mentioned you mentioned the dating scene has completely changed right now yeah are you dating right now i am actually yes. okay uh-huh. how's the I, dating scene it's good okay yeah. no because so so there's one person that you know i've been with for a while now um and it's going good you know i just feel like how can i say this without sounding rude it's okay like, you can be rude just be honest we like honesty yeah i feel like you know things have changed for me um ever since i started to give my life to christ you know okay so so i'm starting to see dating as like like if if you're if you're thinking that you want to date somebody, you have to date them with the intention of like marrying them. You know okay. what I mean? That's what I feel like. Okay, that's so where I, your headspace is at now. Yeah, now. But before okay. I was kind of like 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 why like why get married if if you know you if you know you want to be with somebody, just be with them. You know. But I feel like the whole dating thing now is I don't know. I guess I'm at a point in my life where I do want to be somebody's wife. Okay, you know? I like that. So. Do you have wife characteristics? I I think I do, but I'm working on it some okay, more. You know? Okay, okay. I'm working on it some more, especially since I've gotten a lot closer to Christ. I'm, you know, my whole outlook on myself and you know, on and caring for other caring for other people has changed. I love it. A lot more compassion, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, I I think if you're dating it's probably healthier to date because you have the intention of like wanting to be with that person, potentially starting a family with them, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, so, you know, the person that that I've been with, um, I've, I've only been with him for like a while, like a a long time now. Um, I keep it very personal to me and private, just like I do with my family. Um, all of that. Yeah. (laughs) You just never know. Like, you know, I, I would. Is a while over a year? Yeah. uh Okay. Over a year. Yeah. So I've been, um, been very personal because I, I just don't want um I'm very big on like people can speak bad things over the good things that you have and ruin it for you and because the enemy does r- run around okay you know so all of that I feel like I probably wouldn't have had the the relationship that I've had had I been flaunting it and like throwing it out there and stuff because I've had relationships where I've done that and I'm not with that person anymore. So, um, yeah, this one I've kind of kept to myself and, you know, it's been working out uh, a lot. I just know that now that I've gave myself to Christ that, you know, we have different beliefs and stuff. So I can see that definitely taking a toll on us gotcha. and it, yeah. it, that sucks, but you know, does what? he believe like, in God? He believes that there is a God. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so... You that's know, a good place to start. So we're getting somewhere. Gotcha. You know? That's a lot better than like, I don't believe there's a God. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I mean, I guess he's kind of on that plane where he's like, you know, I think he's real, but I'm not too sure because he's never had like 
an encounter or anything like that, okay. you know? So, but that's not, that's not for me to prove, you know? Um, yes, the, the experience itself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've noticed that when you try to prove something to somebody, it just kind of pushes them away more. So, yeah. you know, they, they kind of have to see it for themselves on their own. True. So uh, I'm kind of like, you know, that's God's responsibility, not mine, you know, but, um, definitely I've noticed that if, you know, if you want to follow Christ and everything, it's kind of hard when you're dating somebody who's not following Christ, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, what do they say? It's a hard pill to swallow, as they say. Uh, yeah, you, it is. Um, that's, a, that's a good way to say it. Because it basically, I think there's a saying they say in the Bible, which is like, you can't worship, you can't serve two masters. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so. It's kind of like having one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. It just doesn't work out. And I will say this on the positive note. At least he believes in a creator, right? Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah. Somewhat? Yeah. We've actually had this conversation yeah. like not too long ago. Like okay. maybe like last week or something. Okay. It is, it's resurfacing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. With, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, um, so I, yeah. we won't... We, so this is the last <laughs> thing I'll say about it, right? Which is... Yeah. Um, and I think this is like the best thing about going back to relationships, right? Is having a conversation, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Conversation. Because if we don't talk about it, then we won't know where we stand or how we feel about the situation, right? right? And how does he feel about your pictures online? He's cool with it? I guess he has to be. It's it's there. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? So he, like, usually I will show it to him and be like, what do you think about this? You know? Okay. And, you know, there has been times where, like, he, he was kind of like, uh, I don't know, because he kind of, you know, he's like, I, I know how guys are and whatnot. But I've told him, you know, like, I'm not really, you know, posting this to, like, get something from other guys, you know, like, I'm only doing it for myself. And, like, there's people that I know that I kind of encourage, you know, like, not trying to say, like, take your clothes off or anything like that, but, like, you know, encouraging women to, like, embrace themselves more and, and all that. Um, but there has been times where, you know, he'd be like, I like that, you know, like, you, like that looks good. Or, like, he'll kind of be like, uh, I don't know, but if you want to, like, I can't stop you, you know, type of thing. So, yeah. like, you know, so like, I kind of have to, like, take it easy. Like, you know, I, I don't want to, like, make him feel like his opinion doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, he's he's okay with it. He's he's kind of like, you know, well, I know that you're not, you know, being with other people. Like, you're, you're like, with me. So he's kind of like, it doesn't matter what they say, you know. He, but then he's like... I don't know because I don't know, I don't know what they're doing with that picture, you know. Type that of part, thing. like yeah. screenshot, uh-huh, save, exactly. print. Exactly. Yeah. 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 T- Taping myself next to the picture. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> yeah. No. I, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know. But I guess the good thing is, is that you're you're focusing on rebranding yourself. Yeah. So that's really good news. For right? sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of modeling, which we have been talking about, right? Yeah. What are some things that you hate, dislike? I was going to say hate hate or dislike about modeling and what are some things that you really like about modeling some things that i dislike about it um i can't really think of something that i can say like oh, i absolutely hate that but i i guess some things that i really could say that i love about it is that i mean it could i could either be a hobby for you or it could be something that you want to really make a career out of mm-hmm. and you're always going to meet new people and that's something that I love is meeting new people, socializing, you know. Um, and I, I think also, too, the creative part of it, too. I love, I love collaborating with people that are creatives themselves. Gotcha. So, like, you know, if, you know, there's been people that have wanted to work with me, but then they expect me to come up with everything. And I'm oh, like, that's weird. yeah, and I'm like, that's not how it's supposed to go, <laughs> you know, you. and um, there's people where they have this whole idea and they're like, you'd be perfect for it. So then like, you know, we kind of execute it. And that's what I love seeing is like a piece of artwork coming together, you mm-hmm. know, and sometimes you could do it with a team. Sometimes it could just be you and, and the photographer or the cinematographer or um, sometimes it could just even be the makeup artist. She's like, I just need you to like take these pictures with me. And, you know, so I that's what I love the most about it. I can't really like pinpoint something that I don't like about it, but maybe sometimes that there's unfairness, probably like sometimes you can see that people just want to like use you for their own benefit but not give you like like any other benefit besides getting pictures back and Mm -hmm. sometimes like 
I mean, it hasn't really happened too much to me, but I, I kind of have seen like there's some favoritism too in some places, you know, but I kind of know where to, you know, s like stay distant or, you know, sometimes you, some things are left, you know, if you don't try to like pry into it or something mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess I, I, I love it more than I have a lot more to love about it than I do to not love to about, just like it. about it yeah uh -huh. got you. you know when you when you said like um like concepts like you like mm. dealing with concepts it, i always think about i'm not sure if you ever seen the movie austin powers yeah but there's like a scene where like he's a photographer he's like photo photographing the girl he's like you're you're a cheetah you're a cheetah <laughs> you're bar barrow barrow yes 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 yep yeah. and i'm just like cracks me up i just think about that they're like a yeah. scene yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, that's funny because there are some photographers like that really yeah <laughs> we're like like they get so in their zone when they're with a model that knows what they're doing that they're kind of just like oh i love it i love it and then i like they want to do they want you to do something else so they'll be like they're like like get, like give me a sexy sexy eyes closure you know like whatever so like mm. i kind of like laugh because it's you know funny to me but mm -hmm. i'm like you know they're in their zone and they have like a certain vision for it and they see it so you know but that's so funny that you compare it to that because it that's kind of how it is sometimes. it really is like that <laughs> got you yeah. shout out to you mike myers uh it's so great yeah. you know um i saw you in um cam archer's ruthless video right yeah You're in it, right? Uh -huh. so what's um do you have any in, i think you mentioned too are you have any inspirations in like wanting to be an actress and doing some more acting um, like, have I had celebrity inspirations or no? Like, w like any interest in like wanting to like pursue oh, acting and doing some more acting? I at got all? you. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Yeah, I actually have. Um, so, I, I don't know uh, if you remember that I mentioned earlier that I've done some background acting. Yeah, background. So mm -hmm. I've done that maybe for about a year, probably around 2016, 2017-ish. Could be 2018 too, but. Um, I was doing a lot of background acting and that one I will say that I did end up hiring a management for because mm. for a while I was doing it by myself. But then um, actually this management came to me and they okay. they kind of were just like, you know, you know, we'll book you and all these things. So I took advantage of that and they were booking me like crazy just to be background, like, you know, just to show up and like you know, just go into the dressing room and then like, you know, standing behind or whatever. But, um, I was had a paid? lot of fun. Was it paid? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And I've actually, I've met a lot of people there too. And, um, I remember this one, this one, uh, show that I did in particular, the producer really liked me and wanted me to come back for like a solo kind of thing. So I did that. Um, and that was a lot of fun too. And, and I thought, you know, like this is really fun. I mean, I love modeling. Like modeling yeah. is, you know, one of like my biggest things. But when I started doing that, I was like, dang, I feel really important. And I like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me. Yeah. So I, I definitely do have like, and, and like coming back to present time, like I do think about like, dang, I want to do more acting, you know, I want to get into more of like being um, more of the principal role, role for some, you know, maybe some shows or something. Yeah. Um, the background was a lot of fun. Uh, I just know that being front and center is a lot different. You know? A lot different. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh huh. So when it's little things like short, like not little, but like shorter, um, like cameos and stuff, like I've done with Cam, mm -hmm. um, and I've done and for other uh, artists too. Like those are really fun because I'm just like you know, there's not a lot of people you have to like coordinate with. It's just kind of like you and then the person, you know. So that when I do things like that, I definitely do think about like, dang, I should do acting again. Yeah, gotcha. get more into acting. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> I, I think hey, I think we're talking about it for a reason. Maybe it's uh, probably huh? to get in there. Yeah. What uh, is there a genre that you like more than others that you would like to act in? Um. Or find interest in? I'm uh, thinking about it. I think I've kind of done, I probably have done, I, I don't think I've done horror. Okay. That would probably be fun, trying something horror. Mm -hmm. um, but I, don't, I guess like I would probably find more fun out of like suspense or like thrillers. Okay, interesting. You know? Okay. Some comedy probably, but I feel like I'm not that much of a funny person. Okay. I mean, I, I love to laugh, but I don't know if I can be the one to make people laugh. You hey, know? you never know. Yeah, you do too. You Maybe that's know? a boundary or that's a wall that needs to be 
torn down. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Try it out, right? You yeah. never know until you put your toe in. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would love to do acting like movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been on my mind a lot more to do like commercial work. First? Yeah. Okay. Just to kind of get those smaller, like, uh, smaller footage is done and then like you know once i'm more comfortable with being in the screen by myself maybe i can jump into bigger things but you know it's not really up for me to decide like you know i'll like apply for agencies and stuff and see like where that takes me gotcha. you know what i mean it might be like the same thing for like your modeling career where you like jump they throw you right into like a feature film right like hey boom you're in the never know titanic three or whatever yeah boom. yeah i actually have a friend um i can't remember well like when this when they told me this but they were like i just see you doing like a fast and the furious type of movie and i was like oh, okay oh. I was like, really? okay <laughs> got that gal Gadot look i could see that <laughs> yeah they're yeah they were Her. like i see you doing something like that like action and i was like hmm maybe i might I mean, that'd be kind of cool yeah <laughs> that'd be kind of cool yeah that's right? a series that's never gonna die it's gonna keep on going seriously huh yeah it's gonna keep on yeah. going <laughs> like a superhero movie now basically right <laughs> you know um Obviously, you've been modeling for 10 years now, almost. It's like seven plus. Yeah, yeah. almost 10 years. Uh -huh. What are some of your dream goals that you would like to reach via modeling? Yeah, modeling. Um, you know what? I've thought about that, too, because since I've been modeling on my own for a while now, I was thinking, what can I make out of this to like have as a as like a landmark, I guess you can say? Um, but Pretty much I want to do, I want to have something where, I guess it's been a couple things where I've thought about, but like, I want to have something where I can teach other women or young ladies, like, you know, you, I mean, I guess I am a part of something like that already, mm -hmm. but cause I, I, I am a part of, um, the ideal model. So they're, they're like a group where they're not a management or an agency, but they do, teach models the business side of modeling gotcha. it's like you know models I mean? for models right yeah yeah, yeah. pretty okay. much like that uh-huh so uh my friend crystal shout out to crystal she came from florida and came to la and mm -hmm. then when she came to la she, uh i submitted myself to be um to be as one of the, to be one of the models for her and this was through a friend so she accepted me right away and everything she was big out in florida but when she came over here she brought like a lot of it over here mm. so um yeah, because of her, I was able to learn a lot more of the business side of modeling, like not just being the model, but like knowing what to do when it comes to like monetization okay. and like getting work for yourself, like uh, making brand deals and all this stuff. So, you know, I've learned a lot from her and we're still really good friends. I, I love her to death. Um, but I think for myself, I would probably want to have something where like something similar like that where I can have a management that can help talent to pretty much be led on a good path because, you know, sometimes talent can get taken advantage of and mm -hmm. like they don't see the money as much as they should or they get into like bad deals or contracts or whatever. So maybe I would like to do something like that. But for myself, I would like to be able to be recognized and known for doing something that uh i guess can like you know like how sometimes there's movies where we're like oh you know that's never gonna get old or it feels good to like watch that movie because i used to watch that movie all the time growing up or something like that I, I would like to do something like that like ultimately okay. like have something that's never gonna like die out be a part of like a cult classic <laughs> yeah uh, like the fifth element wall uh, yeah fifth like element. yeah something yeah something cool where like you know it's gonna like generations from now, people are gonna be like, "Yeah, that movie is a good movie. Like it's old, but it's a classic." I can yeah. still watch it. Yeah, that would be kind of that. That would be kind of cool to see that, you know. But okay. we'll, we'll see if that ever does happen. Maybe. Hey, you never know. Yeah. The more I guess, the more you do, the more you, you have created content, right? Mm -hmm. So, is there like any dreams to be a part of like Paris Fashion Show or things like that, or is that yeah. on the list? You know what? I actually did have that on my list for a while, like to do uh, New York, but like Paris, like how you mentioned, mm -hmm. like, or, you know, out there somewhere, like, you know, in a whole, whole different country. I have thought about that, like doing some runway or something, but you know what? It, this sounds kind of funny because I've done fashion shows and stuff, but I don't think it's my cup of tea. Okay. Like I like it, but I don't know. I kind of get stressed, like 
I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't know. It's weird. Interesting. It's, it's a, a different vibe. Than yeah, photo it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Like you know, some some girls like they kill it. Like yeah, they they yeah. do it, like so great. But for when it comes to me, I'm like. I like blackout. Like, I, okay. like I, I don't even like when I'm done walking, I'm just like, what did I do? Like, did, did I smile? Like, yeah. Where was I? <laughs> yeah. Out of body experience, Loki. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, I mean, I like it, but I don't know if I would want to, I just feel like there's a lot of pressure and I, I don't really like the pressure. Got you. Yeah. It's not worth it. No, oh, okay. but I mean, if I, if I could choose, I would love to work with, you know, designers from different countries or something like big designers mm-hmm. like uh, i mean what so i did i've thought about like you know prada and like you know gucci or uh, you know there's other designers too like um like saint laurent or you know okay. you know some stuff yeah. like that or yeah. uh, some of them local i mean there can be other ones that i probably haven't really you know considered that are not in the u.s but i would love to like be able to collaborate and work with designers or um even just other artists that are from around the world like mm-hmm. i feel like i'm not meant to just be here like i want to do do things elsewhere too okay you know so like a global brand yeah uh-huh. okay yeah i want to be able to because i don't know i just feel like since i since i already love being social with people like there's just too many people to talk to that i haven't even like spoke to yet i feel like like there's okay. just so much that i want to do you know gotcha yeah i feel like modeling kind of opened that door for me and like acting will probably open it more. even more yeah yeah uh-huh <laughs> i guess you got to be careful who you talk to too right definitely right yeah. not every not everyone's your friend mm-hmm. not everyone's yep. your yep that's so true you gotta definitely you know not everyone's gonna have your best interest of course mm-hmm. why would they right that's true um you know you mentioned earlier that people like I want to say Mariah, but I think that's the wrong name. Um, we're rooting for you, right? Yeah, be, yeah. Were there any people that were saying, because I know, you know, you were trying to appease your parents a lot. Mm-hmm. Were there any people who were kind of not for you and seeing your vision of becoming a model? Do you know where I'm getting at? Yeah. And you had to kind of figure out, hey, I want to do this modeling thing. Yeah. Like, like if, like if there was some people that were kind of like, no, you should just stick to, you know, going like sticking to the medical field yeah yeah do this instead yeah Yeah, i mean i i feel like my parents were kind of like that Mm -hmm. where they were just like like i think i think that when i started to do modeling that they thought oh it's just like a phase okay like it's like it's just her hobby like you know Mm -hmm. but then when i started to pay more attention to it and stuff um i think my mom was more like oh, so you really do want to do this, mm. you know? And so I was like, yeah, yeah you know? And um, she, so, you know, I, I could tell at first they were probably like, she should just, you know, stick to like the cookie cutter type of thing. But then when they saw that I was passionate about it, they were like, you know what, we, you know, we're going to support you. Whatever you want to do, like, you know, just be careful, you know? And like how you mentioned, not everyone's your friend mm-hmm. type of thing. Because my dad actually... He was actually in the entertainment industry when I was small. So he was, he was always, um, going out to LA and he was on set a lot with, you know, some big people. Like I know that he's worked with Johnny Knoxville quite a bit. (laughs) Okay. He's part of Jackass? Hilarious. (laughs) No, I think maybe, I can't remember what, what this was for, but he was like one of Johnny Knoxville's like, like go-to people. Like he would go like and kind of be around to like make sure everything was like in proper order for him and stuff okay yeah and like, and i know that my dad's actually done um acting too but since he had a family and everything he kind of had to let it go you know yeah so um i know that he knows for sure what it's like to be like you know in the, the in the industry but the whole modeling thing was a lot different than you know, for him. So mm-hmm. he was just like, I just don't want no one to like take advantage of you and stuff. So, you know, he's, he's being a dad. So, yeah, I, I would be like, yeah, I'm gonna be okay, dad. I'm gonna be okay. But it's not until like I experienced things for myself where I was like, this is what my dad was talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But definitely I feel like a lot of the times I've had support. I, I think it just, the biggest criticism came from like, you know, my parents or, gotcha. but out of love though. You know? Of course. Yeah. They're worried <laughs> about their little girl. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Porque. Yeah. Uh, Habla español? Sí, poquito. A poquito? Yeah. Uh-huh. ¿Dónde eres tu familia? Um, de México. Ajá. Uh-huh. Sinaloa y, y Nayarit. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I know, know you speak Spanish a little bit, huh? Poquito, sí. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Entiendo, habla, you know. 
poquito. Más o menos. Más o menos, sí. Um, continuar. Uh -huh. um, was it hard for you? Because I know we talked about that you wanted to kind of speak a little bit about pursuing something that means a lot to you and mm -hmm. finding your own way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you remember that? Do you want yeah, to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of the time people kind of get caught up with, you know, my bills have to get paid. I need to make sure, like, I have a stable job, which, I mean, is important, you know? You, know, you want to make sure your bills are paid and you have a stable job and stuff. Um, but I feel like a lot of the times we get lost in that and we lose ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe there's you're passionate about something, whether it be, you know, making music or doing modeling like I do or even um, painting or whatever it may be. You know, maybe you, you like to journal or something like, you know, there might be something that you feel happy doing while you're doing it. And then like you kind of get back to reality and you're like, oh, man, like if I could do this a lot longer, I would. I would just I would, you know, from my experience, I would like to give the advice on, you know, you you are your own individual. Your life is your life. It's nobody else's life. So if there's something that you like to do that makes you feel fulfilled and purposeful, then you should just do it, you know? And if you feel like I don't have enough support around me or whatever it may be, you know, because we're always going to have that. We're always going to have people that are going to be like, are you sure you want to do that? You know, or kind of making us feel like doubtful. Um, I want to say that, you know, at the end of it, who's living your life? It's, ourselves you know and this mm -hmm. i know this is something you mentioned to me earlier like you know who's who's the one living your life it's you know we're living our own life so if there's something that you want to do or even maybe you, you feel like like maybe i can turn this into something like you wouldn't be thinking that for no reason you know you should just you know research however you need to reach out to people you know don't ever feel like people are going to turn you down um when it comes to helping because sometimes people are a lot more nice and helpful than we assume they are, mm -hmm. you know, cause I've reached out to a lot of people too. Um, but definitely I would say try not to get so caught up on things that are going wrong or trying to please other people because you're going to be miserable. Like at the end of the day, cause I kind of went through that for a little bit. And, um, if there's something that you want to try out, like just try it out. Like don't even think twice on should I, am I worthy enough? Because you are worthy. Like we're all worthy. We're the only one keeping ourselves back and making excuses, you know, to yeah. not do something. So if you ever need encouragement, I'm the type of person, like if you come to me, I'm going to speak to you, you know, with love and care because like, I do care about you. Like we might not know each other very well, but I'm all up for encouragement because I kind of wish I had that, you know, growing up. Um, I've had a loving family with me uh, throughout my whole life. But when it came to like wanting to pursue something, I felt like, well, no one's going to make this happen for me, so I need to do it myself. But now that I have, you know, my experiences and my knowledge, I feel like, you know, there's probably more more me's, you know, like that don't have the guidance or feel like they're not worthy of something or they've, you know, been, been bullied or something and they think, you know, I, I can't do it because I've been told my whole life I can't do it or whatever. But um, yeah, I definitely want to say like, like we only have one life. And you should for sure do what makes you happy. And if you feel like, you know, you've wasted a lot of time, like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, today's a good, a good day to, you know, change that mindset and to do what, what you feel is going to internally make you happy. Because, yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of, you can't please everybody. There, there's not a lot of people that, you know, and once you do please somebody, it's kind of like, but what about yourself? Like, yeah. did you make yourself happy too? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically impossible to please everybody. Yeah. And you shouldn't even try. You should definitely start with self and work outward. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, kind of the key. It's 100%. kind of like a seed, right? You can't, a seed can't bear fruit until it sprouts and grows its roots and turn a tree and then it can feed other people after it feeds itself. Exactly. Um, and so I, two things, I think you should start filming yourself saying these positive things affirmations to your audience as opposed to just having pictures of your body you're think, actually like the third person like within a month to tell me that okay so i, I think I you should that. you think you should listen to god speaking through his angels to you 
and follow yeah, up on that. Yeah, for thought. sure. Uh, you took took it out of my head because I was literally I was thinking I was like, thank you God, like I needed this confirmation. You know? Yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> thank put you. that in. Yeah. yeah so I'm gonna start doing that a lot more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll it'll hit people the right way. Yeah. And going back to what Linda was saying, and I have it in my book. It's called Root for Yourself. So nothing if you if you want to have any happiness in this life you have to believe in yourself and you have to root for yourself your parents can believe in you your partner can believe in you your family can believe in you but if you don't believe and root for your own happiness it's 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 useless it, it'll mm-hmm. never happen so you have to believe in yourself and, and root for yourself yes and then that's the key to life and i i had this saying that i created and i wrote down which is Your happiness is not guaranteed, but misery is. We live in a very miserable, created world. Mm -hmm. So you have to find your happiness, pursue it, and do it. Because like they say, misery loves company, and your misery is always guaranteed, but your happiness is not. So do the things in life that makes you happy. If that's dancing, singing, playing with your kids, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. do that little thing that makes you happy every day. Yes. Because your happiness is crucial and needed. Yes. It's needed. 100%. Um. But let's go back to you, Miss Linda, right? Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. I want to congratulate you on being on the cover of Ideal Model. Oh, thank you. Right? Yeah. Really, really cool. That was exciting. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned that you also do like sponsorships or, you know, you do brand deals, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you um, choose the brands? How do you know what's good for your avenue? How do you pick them and how does it work for you? Um, so the whole brand deals and sponsorships, I feel like they kind of, so, so the way that that came about is like, originally I wasn't even trying to look for them. They kind of came about the more I started to pursue modeling. And, um, I didn't really know like that there was a specific way on, I guess, reaching out to brands or anything like that. I feel like the sponsorships that I did get, it was the brand reaching out to me because they saw how persistent I was like in posting and creating content and um, just the consistency of me modeling. And tagging uh, them? Were you tagging them as well? I, I would tag some of them, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. But it's so funny because I would tag brands. Like if I used if I used them, like, you know, a lipstick or something, I used them for that picture or, um, you know, an outfit like Forever 21 or something, I don't know. Um, I would post them. Like and tag them, but it would be like different brands reaching out to me. Like, okay, you know interesting. I mean? Yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. I was like, oh, like you know, just because you're not getting noticed by this certain one that you're hoping to be noticed by, like, doesn't mean that there's not a room full of other opportunities, you know, mm-hmm. that are waiting to come to you. So the sponsorships that I did get, one of them, one of the biggest ones um, for me was uh, it would be Kiss products. So they're like in Walgreens, they're in Target, they're okay. like they're like nails, um, false eyelashes, all that stuff. So they were the ones um, that I had like my biggest sponsorship by. They reached out to me via email and they were like, we want to send you products, um, like a mixed box of products and, you know, do whatever you want with them. Okay. Like we're, we're not, we're not expecting you to like, you know, send a bunch of content to us, but just like wear them, you know, they just wanted me to like be a walking, like okay. kiss product, Brand. I guess yeah. you can say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was like one of my biggest sponsorships. And, um, I still have a lot of products from them to this day that like, I haven't even worn yet or opened up, but wow, yeah, I was super thankful for that because then that was able, I was able to get more doors open because by tagging them, other products or brands Sorry. would see and they're like, oh, she's working with Kiss, you know? But um, Would these also be paying sponsorships as well? I've had some that did pay me, yeah. Okay. Kiss, Kiss, they've only just sent me products for free. Okay. So I didn't have to buy them. Um, but I've had one just recently actually where they did pay me and it was a lingerie product. Okay. Uh, they, they reached out to me through email and they were like, hey, you'd be perfect. Can we send you this product? And then once you um, sent us your content, then we'll we'll send you like your monetary payment. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, you know. But I've also had other ones where it was like, um, like let's say like a photographer, they were like, hey, I'll pay you if you like wear this brand for me or whatever, you know, because probably they're trying to 
send them something that they need, but they just needed a model. So like they pay me for that. You okay. Know? So I guess I'm like an independent contractor at that point. Okay. You know? I like it. Yeah. You know, and that's what I was, that's what I was when I was doing a lot of background acting was I would have to like file my taxes as an independent contractor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess I'm still an independent contractor, just not with the whole acting side. It's like more of the modeling side. Yeah. And I, I barely started seeing, you know, the money come in from modeling like a year ago. Okay. Yeah, and I was working hard at it, like, without getting paid for a while, like, a couple years. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy with what you're getting right now so far with it? Are you content? Yeah, I actually surprised myself. Okay. Because when I first started, I was just, like, I had no idea what was going to happen. I just thought, I'm just going to do this because I was having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I didn't really have an end goal, really. I just thought, like, fashion shows would be fun. I should, you know, just... You know, thinking about like the possibilities, like working with artists, like um, makeup artists and stuff like that and designers. And so then when they started happening, I was like, dang, like it really can be at arm's reach if you just like believe in yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and just do it. Because if you're sitting there thinking about it, but not even putting in the action, then you're not going to see anything. Yeah. You know? So, True. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. I feel like it, it surpassed my expectations Dope. with modeling. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like social media is like the biggest tool right now. Like if you're not using it, then you're, you're losing. Yeah. You know, so I, you have to like use social media. I feel like if, if, unless if you have an agency that's going to do all of that for you, but even then you still want to be able to like have something that you can use for yourself to promote yourself, you know? True. hundred percent. So, yeah. hundred uh -huh. percent. I feel like a lot of, a lot of, I, I feel like it's not talked about enough how social media has changed the whole game. It has. For promoting yourself. 100%. Yeah. 100%. You become, you become your own brand and your own business at yeah, that point. Yeah, seriously. Cutting out the middleman, low key, mm -hmm, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're doing it all without, a, without mm -hmm. an agency right now you're as we speak. 100% right, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked about modeling a lot, right? So what do you do for fun outside of modeling? What do I do for fun? We know you get lit on, you know, on weekends, but. <laughs> you know, I've actually calmed down a lot on getting lit, but I like to, you know, my family is like a big thing for me. So okay. um, I've calmed down a lot with like going out and stuff, but, you know, I, I like to on occasion enjoy going out a little bit, but like responsibly, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to be home at this certain time and not be out on all, all night, you know, okay. and like. Um, you know, limit myself with what I'm drinking and all that. Like I'm, I've, I feel like I've grown a lot from that aspect, but I love being around my family. So I, I am the oldest of, you know, five of us. I'm the oldest. So I love being around my mom and my dad and I love being around my sisters and my brother. Mm -hmm. So just spending quality time with them, you know, um, I like to read. So I have, I mean, the Bible is like the biggest one right now for me. Okay. Yeah, I have that. And there's another book called Jesus Calling. Okay. Uh, that's a good one too. Um, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but gotcha. for me, it's, you know, it keeps me, it keeps me sane, especially when I feel like, you know, I'm overwhelmed with something or the day stressed me out, then like, you know, I'll read it. Gotcha. So you're not reading Harry Potter or anything like that? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, no. But I have read books like Twilight. Okay. Like back then though. Gotcha. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had that. What was his name? I was going to say Eric way off. Eric uh, Edward. Okay, that's close. Hey, look at the E part, right? Got you. Edward Cullen okay. and Jacob. Oh, damn. Boom. You know I was such a big Twilight Were fan you? back then. You watched all the movies too? Oh my gosh, yeah. Got you. Mm -hmm. I was one of those girls that was Team Jacob. Uh-oh. There's actually teams, huh? Yeah, Got you. Team, team uh, Edward and Team Jacob. Is that the yeah. werewolf or the vampire? Yeah. Jacob is the, the, is the werewolf? werewolf, yeah. Got you, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Th those were fun days, you know. I got to, I feel like I had a, a, fun, a fun childhood and uh, adolescent you know, teenagehood. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was fun. Um, but going yeah. back to like yeah. what else I would like to do, um, I I like to paint. Really? I, yeah. I just recently... Like, like paint walls or... Um, no, just like images, like paper, you know, like on, okay. a, like on a canvas or something. Gotcha. You know, something small. But I, I've found that I like painting. It's very soothing for me. It's therapy for me. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I like doing that. Is this like, recent that you found it? Yeah, maybe like... Probably like a little after summertime. Wow. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, probably like summer, end of summertime. I, I, I figured that it makes me feel more like letting go of everything that was stressing me out and just like 
focusing on things that I can control, which yeah. is like the coloring and, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, that. Um, wow. Yeah. I, it, it reminds <laughs> me of, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, you're but fine. There, um, so it reminds me of two things. There's a famous jazz musician named Miles Davis. And he went through a period of time where he needed to get away from playing music and he started learning how to paint mm. and he started painting really well. Mm -hmm. And it also reminds me of Jim Carrey. When he got away from comedy, he started painting as well. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. It's yeah. just interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like it's just something about holding the paintbrush and like getting to be in control and like choosing the colors you want to use, the brushes you want to use, like what you're going to like everything is in your hand and you kind of are like, all right, I get to choose what I'm doing. You got know? you. Because sometimes throughout the day, like you have to take life as it comes, you know, and mm -hmm. you feel like you don't have control a lot of the time. Um, but I feel like painting is a good therapy. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if you've never, if you've never tried it, you should. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's your top of the line right there, huh? That's, that's your, uh, mm -hmm. USA moment. Yeah. I guess okay. you can say that. Uh -huh. I love that. Yeah. Um, Linda, what's something that you're willing to share that most people, even close people don't know about you? Um, let me see. Something that I'm willing to share that not a lot of people know about me. Mm, I can't really think of something right now. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I don't really talk about it too much, but like, I, I don't know how big this is, probably really small, but, um, you know, I sometimes, I not sometimes, but I do think about it a lot every day, especially recent that, I kind of just want to like live like on a homestead, have a family and everything. I don't talk about it too much because I'm always hyping myself up on like doing all these things within modeling and like, you know, all like making like a name for myself. But I think a lot of people don't really know that, you know, deep down, I kind of want to have like that, that wife, that wifey life, okay. you know, okay. and, you know, but. I try not to stress too much about it because I, I, I'm one of those people like when the time's right, it'll happen, you know, but I think that's one thing. But other than that, I can't really think of too much. I mean, I am pretty private, but I can't really think of something right now that people don't know about me. I mean, maybe like the whole dating thing, probably people didn't really know because I don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I am dating and I've been with this person for, for a long time now. Um, what else can I think of? Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much about all that I can think of right okay. now. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. On the spot, I can't really that's think cool. of too much. <laughs> she's going to text me later. She's like, yeah, yeah I, I like to something. smell cheese at night. <laughs> they don't know. Oh, well, if we're talking about food, I'm a big pickle fan, like dill pickle fan. Okay. <laughs> just, give, just give you the whole jar. Just like, here's the jar. Yeah. If you ever wanted to give me a gift or something, yeah. Got you. I, I will be suffice with that. Got you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> jar of pickles seriously it's so funny because at my job uh my office job we have like a, a gift exchange going on a yeah. secret santa and i literally put pickles on there like they're like what's like what's one favorite snack of yours and i put pickles got you <laughs> i will be happy with pickles if you don't want to get me anything else <laughs> hey there you go you want key to her heart ladies and gentlemen pickles yeah Pickle. yeah kosher kosher is good okay yeah, kosher is good. so you definitely like pickles on your burgers I love pickles. Yeah, I'll ask for a side of pickles too. Gotcha. Yeah, I and if if we want to get specific, I really love the pickles. I don't know if you've ever seen. Um, I don't know if Stater still has them, but Stater's in the deli section. They'll have like a big jar of pickles where their counter is, yeah. and they're like the like the juicy big fat ones. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's your that's your <laughs> those shit. Those are my favorite. Yeah, or okay. like going to Knott's Berry Farm or something, and they have those pickles too. Like anything like that. Like those are my favorite. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the key to your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't bring her flowers. Let's tell her, man. Don't bring her flowers, bro. No flowers. Just bring her a big jar of pickles. <laughs> You're in. No flowers. You're in, bro. No flowers. No chocolate. I can't eat flowers. <laughs> she can't eat flowers. I mean, she's hungry. P pickle, pickle flavored flowers, maybe. <laughs> Um, oh man, that's yeah. so awesome! Uh, dang, I totally lost my train of thought. Damn oh, and I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big Mexican candy lover too. 
Okay, like yeah. the watermelon with the chili on top of it? I love those, yeah. And okay. for for a little while, too, I actually had my own product that I was making where it would be like gushers or peach rings. Um, it would be sour patch watermelon. And I had made my own chamoy sauce. Okay. And I, you know, would drench them in that and put like tahine or like another um, f- like fruit like pika fruit seasoning on there it was so good i don't do it anymore because i was eating too much of it and okay I was like i need to chill out and, Got you. you know and then it started to become a thing where like people were like i'll buy some off of you if you make me some so like you know i would make it for people too but then it just got too overwhelming i couldn't do it by myself doing the modeling the office job and then that too you know Got you. especially yeah. if you're Taken from your own supply. Yeah. That's a bad drug dealer right there. <laughs> you can't get high on your supply. <laughs> that's rule that's number so one. Funny. That's so funny because that's what I was telling myself. I was like, how am I eating my own product? <laughs> you can high on your supply. Come on. That's rule number one. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> kind of management is that? That part. <laughs> That might be a nice little side hustle to get back into maybe low key. Yeah, I've thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've thought about it because I'm like, I have like you know, the process and the recipe down. It's just, I need to not eat my own supply. That's it. Just <laughs> discipline. Just like, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, I need I, to hire somebody to do it for me because I'm going to pick at it if I see it. That part. Tell your, tell your pops or your yeah. somebody like, hey, you I'm know. my mom and my sister. They be like, hey, you know, keep this away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Give me like two. When we sell, when we sell a hundred, let me get like two. Yeah. That's it. You know? Yeah, huh. that's another thing. Probably not a lot of people, not a lot of people knew about me too. Is that I did have like a little candy side hustle going on for a little bit. But I'm a big Mexican candy lover. Ever since I was small, yeah, my grandparents would would bring it from Mexico, like tons of it, and like my huh. my tia, like they would bring tons of it, and I would just pig out on them. I've never gotten tired of it. Got gotcha. you till this day. Pickles and Mexican candy. <laughs> to this day, it's a wrap. <laughs> we know we we know the secret to our heart. Mm-hmm. Pickles, Mexican candy, yes. coffee. Mm-hmm, pot coffee boom yeah you hey. remember that one huh coffee hey, it's a wrap I you love know coffee. <laughs> the ring on the finger it's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah you have her for the rest of your life yes, yep um i wanted to mention because we mentioned about the homestead life right mm-hmm. kind of like fantasize about that mm-hmm. so if you had the opportunity like say the opportunity showed up tomorrow and it was like hey uh i'm gonna take care of you i want to build a family with you you don't have to worry about working anymore. Would you drop everything for it? I would it? trade it in a heartbeat. You would? Mm-hmm. If, if, if I knew that I was going to be taken care of and all I had to do was make sure my house was in order and that my husband was happy and I was happy. You know, if, if I knew that I was going to be set and I can have like my garden and like, you know, have my animals too and like have a little family, I would trade it in a heartbeat. Got you. If I, it. Yeah. Okay. If, if that man was you know, a God-fearing man, he was respectful and everything, then yeah, I definitely would. You know, I have to consider the man I'm marrying too and, and living that life with, you know? Oh, well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it can't just be some guy off the street. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Be like, hey, Bob, what's up? <laughs> I'll, I'll take I'll take her in. I'll take her. <laughs> yeah. We got a box outside. We'll take... I'll be like, help. <laughs> I can... My rats are going to be her animal friends. <laughs> That's what could be the animals in the backyard. <laughs> Um, have some imaginary pigs out there too gotcha do you believe in the order which is god man woman i am starting to believe it now it's hard isn't it in, yeah in this society, it's really it hard, is isn't it? yeah and i was actually talking to my friend's dad yesterday about this um because he he's also so my friend and her dad they're they're going to church a lot more and stuff. So I can, like, we can relate to each other a lot. When, when we're okay. having talks and stuff, you know, we just enlighten each other a lot. But her dad brought up how in this society, women are such go-getters that they don't, they put themselves first and they want to make, you know, a name for themselves. They want to be the money maker, um, And, you know, they don't want to be, you know, the type of woman that is submissive to a husband anymore. They want to be the head of the household and everything is under their control and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you know, you don't really see marriages going the way it's supposed to go. Like, you know, biblically speaking, you know, that the man is supposed to, you know, have the, not, not be the structure, but like be the protector of it and provide the home. And then the woman is supposed to be submissive, you know, to her husband. And they're supposed to be equal, even though that the woman's weaker, they're supposed to be equal. She's supposed to be the structure of the home. She's supposed to make sure that everything is running in order inside the home. And the man is supposed to make sure that everybody and everything underneath him is good, you know, and that he's bringing in, you know, whatever they need. And then the woman just has to make sure that everything is good too. You know, I didn't know that that was a thing until I started to get 
closer to God. And mm-hmm. I started when I started to read more into that, I was feeling like, dang, I like how that sounds. I kind of want that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm learning more about how that's supposed to go. And I, I feel like a pull towards it, too. Yeah, I think it's it's existed since like the beginning of time, right? Mm-hmm. The order. And I think the whole boss babe uh, movement has really, in my opinion, and there is evidence, has kind of destroyed more so... Well, it destroyed women and it destroyed the family structure, right? Because yeah, the women have decided, you know, I I can do I can do what is it? I can do all bad by myself. Yeah, that whole term is like it's like a positive. Yeah, yeah. It's like a thing that people are okay to say. Yeah, I can do bad by myself. It's like, mm-hmm. but do you no. want to be by yourself? Yeah, and do you want to do bad? <laughs> yeah, you know, as opposed to in reality, most women do want a family and kids, mm-hmm. and it usually starts to strike them more in their late thirties if they haven't already had kids mm-hmm. because it's like the. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cycle is starting to, Mother Nature is starting to speak to them yeah, even more and more, right? definitely. And I just want to give you my opinion on the take about, I don't think women are less than men. Yeah. I just think everybody has a role to play. Right. Right. Yeah, it's like yeah. we're, we're assigned roles, right? And so, for example, a man will go outside and kill. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> kill. <laughs> go outside and hunt, right? Get, yeah. the, get the food. Yeah. The Provider. Woman, yeah, the, the woman comes in and makes the meal. Right. The man builds the house. The woman makes it into a home. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Another idea that I heard was that a man has an idea and he gives it to his woman and she helps forms it and shapes it. Mm-hmm. And that can relate right. to like a man puts a seed inside of a woman and mm-hmm. then she... Procreates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nurses the child, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's a, a partnership and everyone has to know their roles, but if people start... Mix, mixing around the roles yeah. and everything is screwed and mm-hmm. you know um, yeah you i can, agree yeah. I, I i definitely can see from that point of view too because um i mean if you if you really think about it like the women wanting to be the boss babe you know which is cool you know if you want to like be able to generate income too for your family it, it's just it throws things off sometimes because then it's like the guy is the stay-at-home wife and then the woman is like being the provider. You know? Oh, when she's the breadwinner. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then I, I don't, and I'm pretty sure because if I was feeling it without kids, like being exhausted at the end of the day because I was hustling, I was working like all week, I didn't get a break or anything, and you know I'm bringing in money and stuff. I don't have kids, but like I would feel exhausted at the end of the day, and I'd be like, dang, how do women like you know how do moms do this? You know, and then, and then they're going to work, you know. So I, when I think about it, I'm like, I would much rather have, you know having a husband who's the provider and then I can just, you know, make sure everything runs smoothly. Like we can have a partnership together and like, you know, how you mentioned, he goes out and provides whatever he needs. He brings it back. And then I'm over on the other end, making sure that like I can give him what he needs and what my children need, you know? Yeah. I I would much rather have that than to be like the breadwinner. Like it's nice to have your own money. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to have your own money, but I feel like it feels, it feels better to think about like, I have a man that can bring in money as well, and if not more money, and that's just one aspect. But like feeling the 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 um, the love that we're supposed to feel too, because we're not supposed to be alone. We're not supposed to be by ourselves. You know, we're mm-hmm. supposed to be able to like create. You know, and then procreate and stuff. So I think about that. Before I was I was all like, I'm gonna you know be by myself. I'm independent and all that. But now I'm like. I'm going to be 29 on the 29th this month. Okay. And I'm like, dang it. Like, I'm in my last year, my 20s. Uh-oh. And, you it's know, starting I'm to hit home, huh? I'm about to hit my 30s. Oh, I'm like, shit. Man. It's hitting <laughs> now home. Now I have to really think about it, you know? So, I mean, I would encourage women, too. Like, you know, it's good to, like, figure out what you love to do and, you know, do it. But also think about, like, you know, do, do you want to have a family and a home? And if you do, make sure you're looking at it from a point of view, like who, who's going to be the person you're going to share that with, you know, and if they're going to make your life better too. hundred yeah. percent. And I would always, and also advise women because a lot of women don't look in relationships from a men perspective. Mm. And so I, I also would encourage women to think about what does, what does he want out of this? True. What would he like out of this? Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of women think, okay, what do I want? And blah, 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 blah. And men, as we do, men are not perceived as lovers and carers, but we actually do. And we actually will give our women what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's our love for them. But what we need more so from women is like, what what would he like? 
what, would, what, what does he look for forward in a, in a family and in a wife and in a woman, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to just me, me, me. I definitely recommend women to start looking in that perspective. And I guarantee you will have a better outcome in your relationship right. when you start thinking, okay, how can I make, like, what does he, what does he want? Yeah. 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 You're right. You know, uh-huh. I, and I've, I've started to notice that too, that it's not all about just I, me, I, like, what, what yeah. about me? And how come, how come it's not working out? Because, you know, I, I want it this way or whatever, but Men have feelings too, you know? We do. And you guys you guys want things to run smoothly also. So there has to be the communication. Like we have to be able to like be open minded and be like, okay, how can we make this work? Like not me. Like I like I don't want to be the boss all the time. You know, you guys, I, I completely see like, you know, women have their insecurities and their struggles and stuff, but men do too. And you know, men wanna be with a woman who's gonna make them feel like, you know, they they also have a say so and that men also can make things work out too like us women we always want to be nurturing and stuff like that but men are also supposed to be our equal so it does matter what you guys think and what you guys want you know and i feel like it's not talked about enough either 100 percent. men men are we're thrown away we're thrown away we're scraps <laughs> it's, it's, it's all yeah we're scraps it's all about <laughs> the women and children right women children and animal and dogs uh-huh. um so but i guarantee you ladies if you're looking for a successful relationship um definitely think about your men and, and you might have to say sac- well everything every relationship te- requires sacrifice but definitely took um, that out of my mouth right now too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. it'll definitely be better if you start thinking okay man like what does my man want maybe he just wants me to leave him alone while he watches the game for a second <laughs> and i just bring him a sandwich yeah. and just like leave him alone yeah. you might, that might be like the, the that's all he wants men are simple we are simple <laughs> we are so simple and I just wanted to address one more thing, which Mm -hmm. is, um, I think, you know, say if a woman, like she wants to still like work a little bit, like part, like have a little part-time side gig or whatever. I think that's fine because idols, idol, I say idle hands does the devil's work. Mm -hmm. So if she's not doing anything, she Mm -hmm. might be, you know, (laughs) so if she has a little bit of something to keep her occupied, I think that's really important while, Mm -hmm. um, or the man, if the man can be the main provider and do things like yeah. that. Uh-huh. And one last thing, there is a, a scripture in the Bible and it's written by Solomon, who's the wisest man, they said. Wisest king. Mm-hmm. And um, in Proverbs, which is one of my favorite books. Uh-huh. And he's like, a man would rather, along the lines of man would rather stay in the corner of his house on the roof than deal with a quarrelsome woman, which is basically a man would rather be in a, dingy, ugly place in his own house than deal with the argumentative wife, an argumentative woman in his house. Because what what women need to understand is that men, when we, we go out, we have to fight the world. So mm-hmm. when we come home, we don't want to fight our wife. Our home should be our sanctuary mm-hmm. and she should make our home our sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Right. So always keep that in mind, women. Yeah. That please make your husband, your boyfriend at peace when he comes home. Don't start nagging him. Don't start blah, blah, blahing when he gets home. Mm-hmm. Make him at peace. And yeah. I guarantee you, as much as I possibly can guarantee, that you'll have a happier husband. Right, yeah. That's yeah. something that, like, I just want to add into that. Like, you know, um, I've, I have I find myself being somewhat of, like, a like an unofficial like counselor or therapist for my parents because they're okay. married and I see it happen sometimes where like my dad will come home and then my mom's like right away nagging and I'm like mom like he just got home <laughs> yeah <laughs> just let him like unwind you know mm-hmm. but you know what I mean but like lovingly I say that you know and yeah. I have to like kind of remind them like you know like you guys are like equal to each other like you know he's dealing with things while he's out and my mom's dealing with things while she's here communicate with each other you know like you don't have to like argue about things you know but you know that's probably a whole other topic for another time but yeah definitely i was just trying to add on to that like you know it happens a lot where in marriages like you mentioned the the man comes home from a really tough day and he's dealing with bs from other people and then he comes home he doesn't want to hear it from his wife he yeah. wants to come home to a loving family and he wants to you know feel like oh i'm at peace now you know it's supposed to be a sanctuary yeah uh-huh. home should be your sanctuary yeah 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 for sure i agree and you know what i mean yeah. we we make it that way and we we make it chaotic too when when we don't realize it yeah mm-hmm. yeah like man just wants to come home give us food kick up his shoes sit down <laughs> you know and if you want to want a home-cooked meal that part like sit home <laughs> oh my god if you don't say anything you just come to him 
let's say he drinks or whatever he does, you know, just he just sits down in his chair. You don't need to say anything. Go, mm-hmm. Here you go, babe. Mm-hmm. Boom, and then just walk away. It says a lot. He'd, he'd be like, <laughs> "Te amo, yeah. te amo." <laughs> yeah, and it could be vice versa too, though. Like you know, if the of woman course. came from a, if the woman came home from you know a very long day, and like you know the man was home, like you know, it could be the same thing too. Like. Like here, here you go, babe. You know, if you wanted. You know, I I know you like this, so here you go. And you know, it's it's nice. Like I feel like actions are big too. You know, they don't huge. have to say much, but if you know, doing something can mean a lot. Yeah. It's huge. Mm-hmm. But I just have to talk about it from the man perspective because usually, the, like I said, for sure, thrown away. Yeah, yeah, under definitely. the rug. Yeah, we got we got to give you guys some space. You know, <laughs> some love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Linda, I want to thank you so much for being on the Empire. Can you please tell us all some of the current projects you're working on? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, thank you again, by the way. Uh, I was actually looking forward to this. I was so excited. I was, t- I was talking to my, my family and my friends about it. But um, I think one of the next things... What were things- you telling them? What were you telling them? What, were you t- <laughs> what was she telling them about us? <laughs> I, was, I was pretty much saying that this is my first ever podcast, you know, interview. Mm-hmm. So I was super excited about that. And I was like, and, you know, it's Inland Empire based, you know, so I was like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I was actually talking to, uh, I think it was my supervisor at work about it. She was like, wow. She was like, what? Because I tell her everything. Like she knows what I, what I do. Mm-hmm. Like even when I, when the whole award show was happening, she was like, you're going to be famous one day. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that makes me happy, you know? But so, um, talking about like presently, like what's, what else is going on? I actually, one of the bigger projects that I have, um, it's not really a project. I pretty much got invited onto it. So there's Project Bloat going on on the oh, 27th. Oh, wow, in L.A. Yeah. With Tangent. Yes, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Shout yep. out to I, Tangent. Yes, Tangent. Oh, my gosh, I'm so thankful for him. I Yeah, him and I, we actually met up not too long, like a week ago maybe. But we were talking about how we're going to see each other again on um, the 27th. So I have that going on. I'm actually doing body painting there. Like, I'm going to be the canvas, and my friend CJ is the artist, so she's going to body paint on me. Okay. Live body painting. And then I'm going to, later on, later on, later on that night, I'm going to be on set with my friend, she's um, having like a two, three minute set on stage. And I'm one of like the muses on stage. Okay. So that night's gonna be pretty busy. But it's you wanna give fun. that artist a shout out? Yeah, Mama Strosity uh-huh. and uh, CJ Para. <laughs> yeah. Those are my friends. Those are the ones that I had the whole Arizona thing with. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna have to tell them about this too. They're probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, because that night was crazy. But anyways, <laughs> um, and then I have like my birthday shoot going on to this coming Saturday, tomorrow, actually, my 29th birthday shoot. But other than that, I'm looking forward to what 2024 has. I'm just trying to take it easy right now because it's holiday season and then my birthday coming up. So, and I'm not doing too much planning right now. I'm kind of taking a little, little break. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the birthday shoot going to be looking like? So my whole idea about it is since my birthday is on the 29th and it's going to be my 29th birthday Mm -hmm. i want to like emphasize 29 because it's my last year my 20s too okay wow so yeah so i um i've never had a birthday shoot before this is gonna be my first one so i wanted to just be like a simple white theme you know like okay you know cake and all that like um kind of like new beginnings you know okay i guess you can say it's also the year you you got to prayer life yeah as well. purity yeah i feel like i've changed a lot new beginnings and i'm i have a lot my my uh, mental state is different it's i feel like it's a lot more settled down and like how i mentioned pure like i i before i was just like it was so much chaos in my head <laughs> but <laughs> a woman with chaos in her head yeah. never heard of that before <laughs> yeah i i don't talk about it but yeah it was when i think back i'm just like i don't even know how i was able to live every day like it's crazy how was i functioning yeah for real it's coffee that part (laughs) like driving through it's like a zombie i was on autopilot a lot i guess (laughs) but yeah when i had to deal with myself i'm like dang i need to sort this out because i don't even know what's going it's like spongebob running around you know okay i got you uh, you know uh, filing papers just everywhere that's what it was like in my head i love it i mean look up patrick patrick's my favorite by the way (laughs) spongebob (laughs) right oh my gosh yeah but yeah that's that's what i have going on tomorrow so i'm excited about that oh awesome Mm -hmm. Cool. My weekend's going to be a good weekend, I feel like. It started off very great with being here, you know, talking with you, being on this podcast. <laughs> Got you. You had a great time, you know. Um, 
And so those are the current projects you got going on there. And there's like coming up soon, these current projects. Yeah. So basically quick. Project Blown's right there. And then your birthday shoot. Wait, your birthday shoot's tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. But your birthday's a couple days after. After, two days after that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's wow. going to be fun. December is always fun for me. It's always a lot going on. It always goes by so fast too. True. Yeah. Do you get two presents? Do you get Christmas presents and birthday presents? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Sometimes, well, Yeah. And now it is kind of like that. Well, I mean, it's kind of been like that. But yeah, sometimes they'll be like, oh, here's your Christmas present. And then I got you a birthday gift. And I'm like, oh, thank you. You shouldn't have, you know. Dope. I'm kind of like at a, at a point where I'm like, if you just wanted to give one, I understand. You know, I get it. Like, it's the holidays. That part. <laughs> yeah. Part. You don't, I'm, you know, I'm not that special. Like, just, you know, if you just even want to say happy birthday, I'm fine with that, too. It's cool. Just give her pickles. Yeah. Pickles. Here's a big jar of pickles. <laughs> there you go. And if you're going to give me a burger, you need some pickles in there, too. That part. And on the side. Yeah. Side of pickles. That part. Mm. Not pepperoncinis. Pickles. Yeah. No. Get it right. Yeah. Pickles. The dill ones, too. I don't... The, the sweet ones, I can't do it. The sweet ones are kind of interesting. Yeah. They're interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it, though. Do you like cucumbers? I love cucumbers. Okay. I love cucumbers with tapatio and lemon and salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not by themselves. They have to have some decorations. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could eat them too like that. Like if it's like slices or something, yeah, yeah I'll eat them too. But I prefer, I'm a, I'm a flavorful person. So okay. I need some, you know, spices and toppings. <laughs> give me some stuff on top of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just give me a, just give me a, a cucumber. I'm going to do with this thing. What, what am I supposed to do with this? That part. You at least put it in vinegar and turn it into a pickle. <laughs> um, yeah. So Linda, I want to thank you again for being on The Empire. Thank you. Let's, let's say mm -hmm. 100 years pass by, 200 years pass by. A millennia passes by. Mm -hmm. What would you like your empire to look like? Whether it's modeling, acting, family, mm -hmm. prayer life. What would you like your empire to look like? My legacy. 500 <clears throat> years from now. Um, I definitely would want to have a way better, a way stronger prayer life, you know? And I would want that to be passed on. Like, I would want people to... Uh, recognize my family as like you know they're very strong they're very they're very strong willed they um you know they're good people <clears throat> um and then as far as like modeling and all that you know I, i'm kind of i i would want to leave a name for myself with that but if it was to be with my family like i don't know if i would push it on them to like get into the same industry but if they did want to then i would you know give them the expertise that I have and I don't know maybe I should make some sort of like book or something and then kind of leave that there so you know when I am passed on and like my generations go down the line like it could be something people can refer to you know like my family could refer to or like even just strangers and stuff but uh, I definitely do want to have the remembrance and you know my legacy being passed on is like you know her family and her descendants are very well connected with God. They're very strong people. They're very compassionate and loving towards others, but they're also very assertive, you know, so they don't get their toes stepped on, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. I, I would want that definitely because I feel like character will last a lot more, you know, than tangible things, you know? 100%. Yeah, definitely. So I, I would want that to happen. Um, yeah, so other than that, maybe just if I did want tangible things, it would probably be like, some advice or expertise that people can get their hands on and look at kind of like how you have your book, mm -hmm. you know, something like that probably. Yeah. I love that. So maybe <laughs> we write your own book soon. Probably. I feel like that's been on my head a lot too. So yeah. maybe this, I needed this as confirmation. <laughs> hey, a lot, a lot of, a lot of things being confirmed today. Yeah. Right. right? Like God work. Yeah. Cause I, I was praying about that. I was like, if there's anything I need to know, like, you know, speaks to me through somebody else or like, you know, give me, the knowledge the knowledge to even think of it you know so yeah i, I do think it, it's happened for a reason like you said yeah. <laughs> yeah i um so that's what you like your empire to look like mm -hmm. i like that yeah yeah i don't believe in accidents i believe everything is supposed to be what it's supposed to be otherwise it wouldn't be yeah uh, you're right i yeah. i agree with you i'm the same way i don't think it's coincidental like some people might see it as coincidence but i think it it was on purpose it happened yeah like for a reason yeah. I do. So, for example, I want to go back to your experience with the door shaking, the door oh, yeah. shaking, right? Yeah, yeah. So, without that, then you wouldn't have never gotten a stronger prayer life to bring your relationship. I feel that that it was a really big, that wasn't coincidental. Like, I feel like that had to happen. In order to get closer, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, what I believe is that, so God is the controller of everything. 
mm-hmm. right? In the spirit world, right? Yeah. So that means even the things that we see are bad mm-hmm. has to go through God in order to happen. Mm-hmm. Are, yeah. you, are, you, are you with me? I, I, you I what I'm saying? You. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be allowed through God to happen, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Things that we might see as bad or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I always like to think that, um, you know, something that may seem terrible at one moment will show its true reasoning later down the line what it was for. Yeah, I'm right? on the same boat as you. Um, you know, some some people experience bad things happening and, you know, sometimes God does allow it, but he uses that as like a catapult to bring you closer to him. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Um, you know, but, there, you know, sometimes people would see it as like, how could he do that? Like, he's not loving if he let that happen, you know. But we also have to remember, like, you know, there's a God. There's also like the enemy, too, you know. So, mm-hmm. I mean, but I feel like God does let things happen sometimes. Um, but it, it, it's all, there, it's by like div, uh, divine like orchestration, I feel like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I agree with you. Bad things do happen. They're always going to happen, but I feel like God's always going to be there and you either fight against him or you kind of walk with him, you know? Yeah. And life gets easier when you, you know, try not to be the one in control of everything because you can't control everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you can control some things, but <laughs> true, true. But not everything. Control what you can control, and mm-hmm. we have to. I'm a big component on. You know, we can't blame the devil for everything. People have to take mm-hmm. accountability for their own evil deeds that yeah, they yeah. choose to do. For sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, we have free will. Yeah, we have the free will. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, mankind's best thing and worst thing for them. Uh, yeah. Um, it could be the biggest downfall, but also well, their greatest victory yeah. at the mm-hmm. same time. I agree with you. Miss Reyes, uh, thank you again for being on the Empire. Can you please tell everybody how they can find you, reach you, support you, yeah. send you a, yeah, yeah. a funny DM? Can you please <laughs> tell them how they can do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, if you are on Instagram, you can find me at the Lin Ray, uh, T H E L I N R E Y. I'm also on TikTok. I, I started appearing more on there. I've had it for a while, but. You can see me on TikTok too um, at official Lin Ray, O F F I C I A L L I N R E Y. Um, I do have Twitter. I'm not there. I'm not on there as often, but live love Linda underscore. <laughs> and then, other than that, um, those are like my main ways that we can all stay in contact with each other. And feel free to DM me. I'm a friendly person. You know, um, I'm willing to talk to anybody if there's anything. You know. Um, not just somebody who's like in the limelight, you know, I'm a person too. So, mm-hmm. so you know, you, you could talk to me, we could be friends. Um, yeah. But other, other than that, that's pretty much where people can find me. But I, I thank you so much for having me on here. Of course. And thank you guys. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you guys. And I hope that you're able to hear something that resonated or, you know, helped you out. Maybe you were stuck or something and we, our conversation helped out a lot. So thank you guys for watching, and I'm really happy to have been on here. Yeah, super to have you. And you have a business email as well, right? Oh, yeah, I do, actually. I do. Yeah, yeah. So my business email will be Lynn Ray Bookings, L-I-N-R-E-Y-B-O-O-K-I-N-G-S at gmail.com. So any serious inquiries to there, please, because I can't filter out. Like that part. Yeah. Be serious, folks. Yeah. We ain't playing around here. Don't yeah. be sending no pitch. No, don't. <laughs> Do not. I mean, you can send money. <laughs> oh, you can send money. You got a cash app? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, Hit him with that cash if, app. Yeah, if you'd like to. My cash app is uh, dollar sign Linray, L I N R E Y. Yeah, because you can send or my PayPal. Boom. <laughs> Same name, Linray? I think so, yeah. Boom. I think so. I have to confirm that. <laughs> Got you. You know, and ladies and gentlemen, I'll have all the links for everything in the description. So that way you can just click on them and you can go right to it. Be respectful, gentlemen. Be gentlemen. Gentlemen. Be, be respectful, yeah. please. Also, I know you ladies out there like to do some stuff too. Mm-hmm. So uh, can't I can't just talk that. about can't just talk about the guys can't out here. There's some <laughs> girls out here be doing some so people please be respectful to Linda. And if you want to do any business, oh my camera just turned off uh, right on me. But, wait, but we went through the whole thing. It, uh, it literally just did that to me right now. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so before I got cut off from my camera there, that was pretty awesome. Um, we learned a lot today from Miss Linda. You know, we learned about 
one thing that stuck to me is like her love for pickles. <laughs> she loves pickles, you know, so you guys can get oh, some pickles man. and yeah. things like that. Fun fact. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we learned that, you know, she was a bad girl in school. She was a mean girl. Mm. She was one of the mean girls. She was Lindsay Lohan and the mean girls. But she learned oh, how to, no. you know, get beyond <laughs> that and, you know, find her true self. Mm-hmm. She accidentally came across modeling by going to her friend's modeling gig and becoming a model. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we also learned that she got a, she has a strong prayer life that she, she's grown and it's helped her grown. And so mm-hmm. we learned a lot today, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I think. And again, I want to thank her for being here. I want to thank all you guys um, for being here. If you guys have it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, comment down below what you guys thought, you know, like I said, I think it was really interesting. Um, please share this also as well. Um, if you guys didn't know, my name is Antonio Lee Miles. And, um, other than that, then the black cat with the hat taking a nap in the back sack. That's it. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh, <laughs> no, she can rap, yo. It's a rap. She, can, she paints is... and she raps. Oh, snap. She didn't just grow up in the Dino. She, she, she Dino. Oh, my God. She Dino. She Dino. <laughs> Dino. Yeah, boom, boom. But uh, I want to thank everybody, and uh, we'll catch you guys yeah. in the next one, all right? Thank you, guys. Peace. <laughs>